Six Gun Productions. New media, new rules. This is Geek News Radio, broadcast 61. For Sunday, May 6th, 2018. It's an audio emoji. You're listening to Geek News Radio, episode 61. I'm Dave in a different place in Birmingham. <laughs> and I'm Fab in, in the same place in Hamburg. Woo! Oh, God. Um, I've just figured out, uh, hopefully, once you <laughs> listen to this, um, we won't, like, Dave won't sound shit. Yeah, that's not nice. And I figured out what it was. So um, I did a very stupid cabling mistake on my... Um, well, see, I've I've got this set up, right? Yeah, you have to describe the setup first, I think. <laughs> okay, so um okay, before we go into that, just 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 say hello to everybody. Hi, welcome, we're back. Um this on this show we will talk about all your cabling mistakes, <laughs> about Dave's Ubuntu experience, my visit to London for the Shadow of the Tomb Raider world premiere. Uh and then Dave will give us an update on his house troubles. I think that's good. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I will talk about my new favorite game, Battle Tech. Yes, but before that, what are you drinking? I have a lovely glass of white wine from Greece. I don't know where it's from. Uh, <laughs> good. It, it, it's good. It's good. I enjoy it's, it. It's, it's better than than what I'm drinking. I'm drinking water because yes. um, on the way back from London, I got I got a flu. It's like the travel flu, you know, how you were at a place yeah. with lots of people and. You yeah. get the share, share the plane with them for a couple of hours and yeah. then you catch every disease. And I'm still not like completely up to, up to scratch, but um, mm-hmm. I think we can do, we can do this. Okay, so my stupid cabling mistake. So what I have here, I have a um, USB audio interface, mm-hmm. which goes to um, those. Oh, what are they called? I've always so, so that's that's what your microphone's plugging into. No, no, no. So um, picture my PC, mm-hmm. and then I have a USB audio interface and it it has usb to what are those uh what are those connectors called chinch xlr no chinch it doesn't have xlr the chinch chinch connectors you know you know those google chinch c-i-n-c-h you know them from really old time like um audio equipment like 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 you know record players and shit oh right they usually used to connect um speakers and stuff so, yeah. So, yeah, so like left, left, red, red, and white. Right, left, exactly, right. and that is exactly the problem, because this has four change connectors. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are two for input and two for output, left and right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And of course, I'm doing everything in mono. But yes. okay, and then then it gets complicated. From there, the audio gets routed to my mixer, and my mixer has an input from that USB interface. Yeah, so, uh, so no, the audio no, from the, the PC. Right, so your your voice uh, is taking that to the mixer. And then my microphone's plugged into a tube preamp with yes. XLR, which is then plugged with XLR into the mixer. Okay, and then you can mix those together to make a, a nice balanced sound. Right, so I'm actually not doing that. What the mixer does, it takes my voice and sends that to you, mm-hmm. back to the computer, and takes your voice from the computer... Mm-hmm. And actually, it's not doing that. Actually, it's it's taking the my microphone signal and your voice, mm-hmm. and from there it pumps it through a compressor, which yep. compresses both channels individually. So they're both mono channels: my voice, your voice, yep. and both co- get compressed differently because mine's coming directly from a mic preamp and yours coming through USB and whatever. And, and then the mixer actually sends my. So your your voice just goes out there and goes into the recorder. My voice goes in the recorder, and then the, my, the mixer sends my voice back through the USB audio interface to the computer mm-hmm. to pipe into Discord, so you can hear it. Mm-hmm. Now the problem is, I connected both leads, uh, like like both channels on the USB interface. So your voice is mm. a mono channel, mm-hmm. and yes. I and I connected both, and that's a problem. So, the, so what I should have actually, so I'm doing this for ten years, right? And I've got mm-hmm. this whole collection of cables, but it's like the fucking Millennium fucking. It's fucking ramshackle. 
<laughs> and I've always done this. Like I've I've, I've sorted this out uh, back in the day uh, with with Dan and, and shit like that. And it's basically I've always done stuff so that it works. Um, it's just so that it works. I I never get around to actually uh actually doing it how it is supposed to be done properly it's just always at a level where it works <laughs> and what i okay. what i should actually have is chinch like a, a single chinch for one audio channel to a single xlr mm-hmm. but the only chinch cables i ever bought for some reason are like <laughs> mo- stereo ones so they they pipe right. two like left and right channels on chinch into one xlr mm-hmm. So what I actually should have, I should just connect the whatever that is, the right channel, which is if you just connect one, it's just gonna be mono. Yeah. And if you connect two, it it's weird. It makes this weird, it does something. Then could like somebody who listens to this who's actually an audio engineer could probably explain it to me. I feel like Dan ever explained this to me five times in the last <laughs> ten years, but I've never I like my brain, I can't do it. Well, it should it should sound better now. Is all I'm saying. I hope yeah. it is. Otherwise, yeah. and um, so it, currently- it never was. Mm, <laughs> uh, I have to fess up here. It never was Dave's connection or his <laughs> microphone. Well, what your connection did was those cutouts on Discord. Yes. But yes. I've had them on the last Kantenglettung I recorded with Martin, ah. who's in Hanover. I've had the same thing. It yes. always. Uh, and yeah. I've had them in reverse. I've had, when we've been playing uh, PUBG. I've had you cut out sometimes. You know what so, I think it is? Hmm. I've looked at this and it starts after about an hour. Hmm. So I have a feeling it's like kind of a memory leak or something. Or just Discord just doesn't expect you to record consistently for an hour, maybe? I don't, I don't know. know. Well, if, if that keeps going on, like for now, we can just stop and I'll cut it out as we've done before. But um, we might we yeah. still can use Studio Link. At least I fixed the big problem. Yes. Yeah, uh, and that kind of like leads neatly into uh, old man house update in terms of things that I have changed. Uh, so <laughs> I have I have moved to the new place. We are now no longer in the flat. Uh, we're in lovely semi-detached house uh, in a suburb that no one in Birmingham can decide where it is. So what's um, a semi-detached house? Uh, semi-detached uh, is we share a wall with. Oh, our uh, ein uh, um, um, Haushälfte, We call this in Germany. Yeah, so it could to, also be in the middle, right? Then you share two walls. Uh, something we, we, in yeah, we have like so, some different terminology we have. So that if you're, um, yeah, that, I, that, that's kind of weird. I, I'd call that a terrace house. So we have terraces, which are like your classic Victorian houses, where uh, everything is built next to each other on a street, and you share two walls. Yeah, one we with call each them Reihenhaus Hälfte. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have end of terraced houses, which are right. essentially a semi-detached because they share one wall. Um, but there are some houses, yeah, that have. But like- so yours is like um, where they build. What is it? The ones where they ca- it's it's basically one house. Like mm. it's it's one house, and they just have it, and everybody gets a half. Pretty so much, yeah. Except that, you know, you know, they build they build two front doors, and yeah, it yeah, really yeah, is, yeah. I mean, it yeah. just looks from the outside as if it also could be one house, but it was yes, never built could, like that. You yeah. could totally buy two of them, glue them together, knock the and walls down, and spend. So that's what my parents did once. Uh, my mum, when my before my parents met, like my mum had one house, and then my parents met, and my dad bought the one next door, and they knocked it through. <laughs> um, but back when houses were affordable. Um, Oh, so, by the way, welcome to Geek House Owner Radio. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, well, we've moved in. It's a semi-detached house. It's it's um, depending on which service you use to look up its address. It ends up being in different suburbs, which is fun. Um, so I guess like, you don't want to say what suburb because there's so small people will go and f- kill you. Find you <laughs> yeah, they can and, they can and, find. Uh, I'm you know. near. Ki- I'm, I I like to say I'm in Kings Heath because it sounds like oh that's friends. no no no. It sounds like fucking Peaky Blinders. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I I work in where Peaky Blinders is. The the BSA, the, the arms yeah. manufacturer, I can see their factory from my office. Arms and motorcycle manufacturer. Yes, they do. And they currently just make air rifles, I think, uh, in that building. Um, well, it was Birmingham Small Arms, right? So Yeah, yeah. But like, I don't think they actually make... Um, so King Thief, that from the map, it's yeah, it's this classical suburb location. Yeah, it? it's very, it's very suburban. So yeah, I, I have changed uh, uh, the suburb. I've changed the type of house. 
I've changed the internet, internet kind of- provider from like fiber to a cabinet somewhere and then ethernet to flat to um, they dig, they dug up a thing to run a cable to the house. Um, two components I've not changed are the power link, like ethernet over power thing. Uh, and I've got a, uh, like a, a router hub, which seems and, to be fine for everything else. And your microphone. Uh, I've not changed the microphone, no, but I do have some other ones we could we could try. But I have uh, changed the cabling, and I think that was the problem I think all so, along. Yes. Um, I was blaming you for no reason at all. <laughs> uh, one, one, one question before you, whatever, keep your thought. Just yeah. one quick question. Was there a Heath there? Because in Peaky Lands, they also always go on about Heath this, Heath that. There, was there, there a was Heath in Birmingham? Te- technically, yes. There were like Heathland sort of bits. Um, our bit was built sort of uh, in the 1930s. Um, our bit got turned from like countryside into, um, yeah, suburbia essentially. Uh, I, th- I don't think it was ever like a weird factory land. I think it went straight from uh, countryside to houses. Um, so yeah, there, there were heaths. Te- I don't know. I don't know. What the, the people are very liberal with the term heath. I think heath is only just sort of like scrub. Yeah, scrub. Well, it's, I, I looked into this because I, you know, I I, used, I, I ride a lot with the motorbike through the uh, Lüneburg Heath, which is huge, mm-hmm. um, which is between Hamburg and then Hanover, um, where yeah. the big military base is. And um, so a heath is a kind of um, a kind of desolate scrubland, and I think it's mostly characterized by being very sandy. Mm, so, okay. um, so apparently the Lüneburg Heath, it, it's really funny because um, there's there's big like conservationist movements here um, who are gonna go on about well, there's a big military base there and they drive through with tanks and everything, right? And they're like, oh, you're destroying like the scrubland, whatever, and the heath must stay at it, as it is. You know, we need to conserve this. And the funny thing is, so apparently the Lüneburg Heath only exists because in the early Middle Ages, the land was so um, aggressively farmed <laughs> that basically um, like sheep and they, they ate everything and there's this and the, the the soil was completely like like destroyed like um it was it was so farmed that there wasn't any nutrients in it anymore so that's where that that sandy ground came from so it used to be forests uh. So conserving yeah. it is it, really just a matter of perspective. It's kind of like how how Greece uh, in in the ancient times used to be like basically rainforest, and yeah. then they cut it all down to make sh- ships and shit out of, out of the wood. And now it's like a completely different landscape. Mm. So the funny thing yeah. is, um, actually, I've read some 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 studies that the fact so the so that the best thing about Lüneburg Heath is like the the fact that it's all fenced off military area and no people can go in it. Mm. And the military drives over there with tanks is actually what keeps the heath as it is. <laughs> so so it keeps like big trees from growing and shit. Um which oh, then right, they, which, they knock them down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what would happen is like like over like I think this would take hundreds of thousands of years, what I think. But but like to get rid of heath, like you'd have trees. First they're like fir trees or whatever grows in sandy ground. Um and then those fall down and decompost and that turns the ground into more Nutrient rich earth, mm, yeah, gives um, it, uh, yeah. substance. So and then the, them bombarding everything and driving through with the tanks just keeps the sand churned up. Ah. Anyway, so, ah. sorry for yeah, that. And it, and, it, and it, yeah, like in the in the UK we get um, like lots of the military bases are, are kind of like really well preserved in terms of wildlife um, because mm. no people can go there, so that there's no people like fucking it up and the only like, animals dying are just when a tank drives over them by accident exactly yeah um, so, which so is I, I, relatively less frequent than uh, like i don't know but i think i killed. think most popular like the most popular definition for you is just that havoc grows there right mm, yeah like scrubland so it's like it's, it's land that doesn't have trees as far as i can tell in terms of like the, which is weird because the lunabur keith has a lot of trees but they're just like small firs like comparably mm. small yeah, I wonder if they're kind of recent additions. Um, well, some of, they, some of it is like cult- cultivated, but mm. so like when they named it the heath, they didn't have trees, but then they're slowly been growing trees. Well, I think it had trees. Like it, it, I think that's different kind of heath. It's just like okay. a very special kind of trees. Also, it's like just fir, <laughs> fir trees. It's not like the normal trees that would grow here, like oak and shit like that. Mm. And yeah, so it's basically just beech and 
and fir is I think the only trees that really can 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 grow on that ground. Yeah. Anyway, um, welcome so, to so botanical yeah. out, uh, out. Say outlaws or radio. <laughs> botanical radio botanical um, outlaws that would be good as well i don't know but back back, at, back at house chat uh yeah it's just god it, all my time is uh spent <laughs> doing doing house things like getting an alarm installed <laughs> um like spending spending like two days Dave, the wait 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 luckily i have popcorn okay <laughs> uh, just keep going <laughs> so it's like spending like two days packing the flat ready to move um, and then putting your back out so on the day of the move you can not really lift anything. Oh and god, you, no, you didn't you, do that, did you? I did. I'm, oh. It's still all really quite painful. Uh, it's getting better, but like I properly fucked it. Um, so I took the day off. I took the day off after the move, not to unpack, but just to fucking lie in bed, like moaning because it hurt. Um, yeah, and and we've got most of the boxes undone now. Like uh, I think it's just. One box of things. I can hear you looking around. <laughs> just like, yeah, I think there's just one box of books. Um, yeah, going back to a callback to uh, a very long... Oh, Ellie's correcting me. It's two boxes of books. <laughs> um, uh, back, to, back to like Angels of Death times when you were complaining about um, moving loads of books. Oh, yeah. I feel, I feel your pain. Oh, my God, they're so heavy. Um, also, because like, we're kind of down some storage space now, so the boxes will stay in boxes until we buy more bookcases. So it's just everything is furniture. And like, what, now you have we're... less storage space now? Well, well we, more floor space, but like we don't have the same amount of shelves because ah, right. we have to we have to put new shelves in, uh, which means we have to buy things mm. or make things, uh, and 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 that takes time, and everything takes time, and mm-hmm. and there's no time to do anything else but house. Um, <laughs> Which is fun, um, but it's good. It's it's really nice. Like it's honestly like so good to have space um, to to not like constantly be like battling to not trip over things or like oh, it's just like, like I have an office now. This this is the office. I'm in the office. It's great. I I've, got, I've got I've got a Ferrari flag on the door. <laughs> There's a bookshelf that's double stacked with books. <laughs> Ellie's booing the Ferrari flag. Yes, I'm with her. I'm with her. <laughs> no, it's not fair. Um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's really nice. Uh, we See? have a garden, which needs a shit ton of work. Oh, mm-hmm. my God, the garden. Uh, so, yeah, proper old man Dave turning. It will, it will all be so much worse, and you have so much less time once you get kids. No, not happening. <laughs> not, not happening. <laughs> I'm kind of happy you say that, but at that point, the podcast will be dead. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that they totally kill podcasts. See, see so I, did, I, Katie made popcorn before we were recording. And I didn't eat it all. Oh. I was like, it's really bad that it's lying there. I wanted to eat it, but I, I just discovered I can use this as kind of like a a, de- a narrative device ex- expression of my. Um, <laughs> it's an audio emoji. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Hey, so good. I think nobody came up with that before. Quickly, patent it. Patent that. Make make the audio emoji consortium. Uh, <laughs> audio uh, code. Gonna... Audio code. <laughs> audio code. Ah, uh, and we're gonna have the <laughs> emoji. Yeah. Or, 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 or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, you could have so many good emojis. <laughs> like the sound of a tank driving along. You know, the, <laughs> the chains going. <laughs> So good. Oh, it was we so good to have the sound of gunfire, which Apple would then replace with a, 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 a water blaster. Oh yeah, like, of course. Uh, oh god, Android did that too now. Uh, did you see they? that? Not, did you see I don't that? Use, I didn't know. That's bullshit. It's now like a, it looks like a super soaker. It looks very much like a super soaker. I hope I hope the company that makes super soakers uh <laughs> <Use them. laughs> Who's uh, that? We need to uh, Oh it was just like some guy. Some guy invented the super soaker. Lolly uh, Johnson. Yeah, he's, it's such like a whole story. It now belongs story. to Hasbro. So it's yeah, now it, called a Nerf Super Soaker. Oh, that's didn't know sad. that. I didn't know that. He, so what what, he, what kind of a story was that? Yeah, it was just like this guy who wanted to like make... Oh God, that, 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 I, I'm probably going to butcher the story, but like he had this idea. He like, saw people with terrible water guns and thought, man, I can make this better for kids. Um, so he invented like, the massive pump action and Super Soaker. And then just, I think he got quite like rich off it from sort of humble beginnings. It's like proper like American dream, like from uh, making it big kind of thing, hmm. which is nice. This is good. Uh, it's a good thing. It's a good story. 
you should go read it rather than uh, have me fail to remember a thing I read three years ago. Um, uh, yeah. According- but I've got... Got yeah. garden. I could totally have a in November 2013. Johnson was awarded nearly 73 million in royalties from Hasbro. Yeah, That's good. he actually well, he actually uh, discovered he was underpaid royalties. Oh wow! Um, and several Nerf line toys, so he <laughs> think he got awarded that in, in arbitration. Lovely. According to Hasbro, the Super Soaker is approaching sales of one billion dollars. Wow, I would quite like that that much. I would not be moving, though. I would not spend it on a house. I have moved. This is our forever home. Initially, it was called Power Drencher. It's <laughs> Power Drencher. Oh, I'm going to call it a Power Drencher. That's so much better. The Power <laughs> Drencher. Oh, that's fantastic. So, shortly after making the deal for the Super Soaker with the Laramie Corporation, Laramie became a subsidiary of Hasbro. But mm-hmm. being an inventor, Johnson came up with another idea, replacing the water in the Super Soaker with a toy projectile nerf whoa so so he also he also invented the nerf gun what a dude that's fantastic yeah amazing guy wow that's that's oh cool. yeah yeah so his history is he used to work for like the air force yeah. weapon yes this is all coming back oh my to god me. you he... just had a cutout oh S- no, screw no, no this no. um yeah he had um yeah he, he worked for the air force he, he built like actual weapons, I think. Uh, and then was like, I'm going to make toys. Hmm. Which is quite rad. That is quite cool. Um, where were we? Okay, so that's your house update out of the way. Yeah, house updates, audio cables. Uh, then let's so- talk about your Ubuntu adventures because people mm. have been saying they want more, like we'll have a, we'll have a scathing feedback email. From Nicholas later. <laughs> oh my god, he's he's fully used the nine thousand characters of an email. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Ubuntu. Um, I I'd mentioned previously that I was like, well, like on the Discord there was a lot of chat about laptop shit, and I'd mentioned that like uh, the the Pixel Book wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. Well, and and, it- and you picked like a. Uh, so, oh, sorry, I didn't want to keep keep on. Yeah, it, it it didn't it didn't do. Um, it didn't do like anything like a real operating system should do, for like doing anything with photos or uh, doing any sort of code. It's just a bit naff. So yeah, so that that was a thing we talked about ages ago. Mm. Um, and I've been faffing around with a laptop. Basically, I've narrowed it down to: do I get a Dell XPS uh, thirteen, or do I get the uh, the Novo X two seventy? And the kind of uh, deciding point was: do I want to have a chunkier device that I can upgrade RAM on, or do I want a sleeker device that doesn't have upgradable RAM? Um, and I spent fucking ages trying to work out like if um, if eight gigabyte of RAM is enough because it appears that the the worldwide um, sort of not shortage of RAM, yeah, it's kind of a shortage of RAM, but of the sky high price of RAM at the moment means that just like consumer grade laptops just come with eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, which I think is kind of ridiculous. Uh, uh, there is another reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, battery life. The mm. more RAM you put into a laptop, the the shorter the battery life goes. I suppose yeah, because it, it's, it's going to run a clock really fast. Yeah, it's not run. like um, the problem is no. It's the problem is also um, RAM needs to be continuously powered. It can't. You know how with CPU cores it can shut down like oh, yeah. cores if you don't need yeah. them. You can't really do that with RAM. Yeah, because otherwise it, it, it loses the state, which I guess is a problem. So, uh, yeah, I was kind of like thinking uh, what I want, because like the, the Lenovo, you could have it, you could go super junky with it. Um, you can, it, it, it's, it's, it's a beast. It has like removable battery. You can that, put a That was the back. idea pad, right? Uh, no, that's, that's a think pad. I did look at that um, Ryzen yes. idea pad. Yeah, uh, that was which... the one I really <laughs> said you shouldn't get because. Uh, yeah, you warned me off it. Well. <laughs> Apparently, apparently, Ryzen is is is, is really bad with Linux mm. um, at this point. Apparently, the power management doesn't work at all, pretty much. No, I that's mean, pretty bad. We <laughs> tested it at work, and you know, the colleague who tests like these laptops with Linux is like, nah, I wouldn't even get that for Windows. The shit with Windows with Linux is like abysmal. <laughs> oh, good, good. I avoided that. Yeah, so I briefly looked at that because like it was a reasonably priced thing. It was like 
It was sub 800 quid. Yeah, I think that's um, why it's reasonably priced, because it's shit. Shit, yeah. Because I was like, how is this so cheap? Like, the only difference I can see from, like, the specs is it's got Ryzen. Uh, that turns out to be the reason. Yeah, so that's, you can, So I was kind of like, yeah, do I go super sleek, or do I go um, big and chunky with the Lenovo? Um, with, the, with the ThinkPad. Because uh, the ThinkPad, you can add, like, you can add the 6L battery into it to give it, like, fucking, like, 20 hours of battery life. Mm. Um, and you can put in an extra stick of RAM to give it 16 gig. Because, like, my gaming PC has 16 gig. My work PC has 32. Going to 8 just feels like, just felt, like, just scary. Funnily really? enough, I just talked about, like, on the weekend, mm. um, I got visited by the Brigadier. Yeah. Uh, eight, eight, 8 Bradshaw, ex Luck Radio podcast listeners Mm -hmm. might remember him and he was like talking about how he got like this laptop and put like a shitload of ram into it Mm. and figured out that immediately when he when he got it the the um, battery life was abysmal Mm. which was mostly because he put so much ram into it (laughs) because the aforementioned problem yeah um so uh, at the end um what decided it was that i got um a deal on um the on the Dell, uh, basically there was a there was a store um, getting rid of their stock of the previous generation. So they recently announced and released the like twenty eighteen version of it, um, which means everyone's sort of selling off their older stock of the old one. And to be honest, like the feature difference between the two is so minor. So which like, one is this, the thirteen or the fifteen? Uh, it's the thirteen, because uh, like I wanted the thirteen inch form factor. Uh, rather than like a bigger thing, uh, mm. so it fits in like a backpack and stuff. Um, so yeah, they, they they released the new 13 inch one, which is like they like rev the processors. They hadn't increased the RAM really. You can get it in like 4K screen at the price of battery life. Uh, I'm just bezel, looking at it, at pictures. This looks really nice. Yeah, the the bezel's like 23 percent smaller or something. And on this oh, on one, the, the new one. On the new one, it's even smaller than the one on mine. But like, on what? yours, it's tiny. Like yeah, compared no, right? to my ThinkPad, it's tiny. <laughs> I know it's bonkers. I was like, who who looked at that design and thought, you know what we need to do? Make that bezel smaller. Because like I'm a little bit scared that like if this gets knocked, like the mate, edge of the screen is so so it, it then, it'll yeah. die. Mate, it, it'll, mm-hmm. I see a major problem here. It has it's, no Ethernet port. No, it is not a laptop. It does not have an Ethernet port. It's a laptop because Ethernet ports are like well old fashioned. Uh, no, they're like I, he- they're like they're not like a laptop. <laughs> they're like headphone jacks. I don't need that shit. Th- this is a uh, toy. This is not um, a man's work machine. It's. I don't know many people who need Ethernet ports for work. You I don't need, need one. Port. It's exactly I, it's, exactly. It's, <laughs> that's not the point. That's not <laughs> the point. It's it's it it might see. Okay, so this is like a, a, a spare tire on a car, right? Mm-hmm. It's been driving me mad since they stopped putting spare tires in cars <laughs> because there's enough space for it, right? Cars get bigger, if anything. It's like they put yeah. this little thing in there. Yeah, if you have a flat tire, you just put like this gel into it and it'll work, right? But mm-hmm. like if with a lot of like if your tire gets really fucked, it doesn't help. And it's like I have never in my, well, once, once in my life I needed a spare tire in a car. Right, I don't really need a spare tire, but it's good that it's there. <laughs> Would you like me to buy a USB C to Ethernet adapter? No, no, no. That's just completely not. I don't. Uh, you know me. I just. <laughs> I don't get the point of it. Like, I. I this laptop can, looks looks really nice. It's really thin. It has a real thin bezel. You know. Yeah. I, I, that's I think, like, it's really thin. The the point is that like when you've got the lid closed, it's it's about like the Ethernet. Jack would need to go in the yeah, yeah, I completely understand that. But my thing is like, what does it help you that it's like, like it's, it's small. It, it, well, it's the, the, like, okay. My, my laptop's a lot bigger because it's a 15 inch. Yeah. Um, uh, no, it's not even, it's like bigger. I don't know. It's, it's a lot bigger, but yeah, but the big, the factor is like the screen size, not like how thick it is. I don't care how thick a laptop is. Like I've ever, like maybe it is. I, I used to have a, a Dell XPS gaming laptop, you know, the, the really yeah, thick the, ones, the beefy, beefy ones. Ever Back since when XPS meant, meant like gaming, not like yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultra, exactly. ultra book. Exactly. Ever since I had that, 
Mm. Like all the other laptops been thin enough. Like I don't need it to be thinner. <laughs> I just don't like, I don't get it. Mm. Like I, I, I'll be worried that it breaks if it's too thin. It, it is really sturdy. Um, like that, it, it, it's got like a machined aluminum top and bottom. Uh, the hinge is super sturdy. Like, uh, it is, there's no like flop in it, which is really nice. Um, good because they used to be shit. Like, yeah. And that the, XPS like, that, Dan and me had back in the day. This wasn't mm. after. This was after the gaming one. I think we both had an XPS thirteen because you know they they tend to run good with Ubuntu. Yeah. Because they had this Ubuntu project thing. And well, they still do. Right? And they yeah yeah that's the next thing I was gonna ask. But like the hinge word was terrible. Like it was uh, that was the mm. breaking point that yeah both, I, both I of re- our machines. I, I really don't like laptops with like shitty hinges. Um, I just they just feel tacky. They feel like they're gonna fall apart, which I don't mm. want. Um. Yeah, but it it being thin is nice because like I could put it in my backpack and then have it in my bag with my work laptop. Um, if I had two, my work laptop's a ThinkPad P70, so it's a big beefy 17 inch monstrosity that has like a hour long battery life. Um, and it's got 30, yeah, it's got 32 gig of RAM. It's got like a Quattro graphics card in it. Like it's a workstation that you can pretend is a laptop for about a meeting. Um, so I can like put my laptop in that bag and then take that like to work on the bus, and so I can like t- do some typing on the bus, which I have been doing recently. Does it does it have the lab ca- lab webcam on the left button of the screen? It, is that it, it? it? It does have it on there. So that's one of the improvements <laughs> in inverted commas that the 2018 version has. In that it's still the webcam still at the bottom, so it still has like. Up well, it has to be because the bezel is so thin. Yeah, exactly. It's the only place you can put it, other than the like a. I, there's there's a there's a really cool like a Chinese knockoff of a of a MacBook where it's uh, you know like you have the webcam button sometimes to like disable webcams. Um, right. and basically, it's like a it's like a function key that you press and it pops up, and then under that is the webcam, um, <laughs> which is kind of which is kind of cool. I said the only other place you could put it on this laptop would be there, but yeah, it's it's on the left hand side. But in the 2018 one, they put it in the center, but it's still on the bottom. So this kind of looks up your nose, but like I don't use the webcam. Right. Like, I. I By the way, those disabled but- webcam buttons are shit. Like, if if you if you care about oh, yeah. like you know somebody's playing on you, just put sticker over Ta- it. Put, put sticker over it. Yeah. You, um. They're they're, so, they're they're software switches. Yeah, they're software switches. Always. Um, they might, all might all might be like firmware, but yeah. Um. The the thing it came with Windows on it. Um. I just think it was going to be your question. Um. Because you can order them online with um, with Ubuntu on them, which is kind of it's kind of what I wanted to do, and that's that's like in, in the kind of yeah. But what does it, that save you? Like twenty bucks? It, well, yeah, it doesn't compared to me getting two hundred quid off it in a store. It didn't save me shit. So like, I got the one with Windows. I made the recovery disc, and I hit the button for like reinstall it with this. So uh, if I ever decide to go back to Windows, I can have it with the same license. I think. Um, which is alright, but like I just put Ubuntu on it straight away. Uh, I put eighteen oh four on it because that's the new hotness, uh, <coughs> and, and it works really, really well. Um, uh, I, I guess we'll transition into Ubuntu eighteen oh four chat. Um, I have not regularly used uh, desktop Linux, uh, like uh, server Linux, like server Ubuntu. Uh, I have used consistently for years. Like website runs it. Home media server runs it, um, but I've always just SSH into it, either using uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux, or, um, or 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 Putty back in the day before we had the uh, we, before Linux became a Windows application. Um, I actually still use Putty. I don't trust this subsystem for Linux. <laughs> the the, the, sub, the subsystem is is bonkers how it works, and it is really really nice. Um, so yeah, you know, like still have my toe in the command line things uh but yeah desktop linux i've just, just not used it at work i had some virtual machines just for dicking around testing things. so you've never uh, used desktop linux well i have like I, I did i did back in like f- right. um 20 i was thinking yeah i thought i thought i misunderstood you there because 20 I th- 2010 until 2015 i used desktop linux like all the time uh my my university laptop which um which is kind of this is the thing i was gonna say about ram in that like uh in 20 11 or 12 i bought a lenovo u300s um because uh ak recommended it he had the orange one because he worked at ubuntu um or canonical 
Uh, and he recommended it. I was like, this is really good. And he helped me like get the lid working because it, it had this issue like where if you close the lid, it didn't sleep. But like some kernel updates helped that. But yeah, um, that came out what? That came out in 2010 or 11. And it had four gig of RAM. Uh, so buying a laptop that has eight gig of RAM in 2018, just the maths of that doesn't sound right in that like it's been six, seven years and the amount of RAM has only doubled. Which I mean, it's doubled. That's huge, right? But um, in computing, it kind of feels like a bit bullshit when like you have like 32 gigabyte systems. Um, You're really hung it, up on the RAM, man. Yeah, because like... I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared that I was scared that eight gigabytes wasn't enough because I'm used to opening like seven copies of Visual Studio simultaneously. I think and that them. your problem there is Visual Studio, not the RAM <laughs> exactly. and the machine. Yeah. It's like here's here's my development environment. It's eight hundred megabytes. It's more than like Ubuntu's base RAM requirements, um, which is bonkers. It's probably more lines of code than Ubuntu um, if you ignore the kernel, probably. Um, so yeah, I, I got it. I, I whacked Ubuntu on it. Uh, I was sat in a cafe. Um, putting Ubuntu in it because we, we, some friends um, had their birthday party at this sort of like uh, adventure bouncy castle funland where like it's this huge sports hall that they've just like filled with inflatable stuff. Oh, this was your cryptic treats. I tried to figure out what the hell is he <laughs> like. So you were tweeting like, oh, well, the Ubuntu installation is great. This bouncy castle is hell. Yeah. And I was so, I, you can't like <laughs> just you can't tweet about this. I thought you were talking about the Java crypto library bouncy no, castle. No, no. I, no, no, I was like, what's 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 he doing with bouncy no, no. castle? Is Ubuntu now on running on Java? Uh, what the fuck's going on? There is there's a place in Manchester called Infl Inflation Inflation? It's like Inflate Nation. It's like a sports hall filled with bouncy castles, like entirely. So like you pay you pay money, you go in and you bounce and there's like walls to climb and you can fall off because it's bouncy there's massive bull pits like it's a proper fun land um but as i mentioned i'd previously fucked my back royally so like putting socks on was like a bit of an issue so i wasn't gonna go for a buncy fun land uh i took my laptop to the cafe uh, and i sat there um is, uh, the, is the cafe a bouncy castle thank fuck it wasn't but it so did have low it had loads of screaming children in it. So I um, had I had this in reading your tweets and having made out that it's not the Java library. I thought, <laughs> okay, it must be an actual bouncy castle. So I had a mental picture of Dave, you know, <laughs> Dave being kind of a tall guy, sitting in a cafe that is a bouncy <laughs> castle, trying to install Ubuntu on his laptop. And I'm like, how the hell do they run a cafe in the bouncy castle? How does the how does the espresso machine even work? Like, how do they make coffee when everything is bouncy around? Is Dave just holding on to his laptop? I in was, one hand, his coffee in his other hand. Trying <laughs> I was I was I was about two meters from the bouncy <laughs> bullshit. Um, so on the edge of the bouncy castle, having having a coffee, installing Ubuntu, uh, 1804. Um, which was, yeah, it was a fun experience because it was very stressful because lots of shouting, screaming children being like, ah, um, which, was, which was hell. Uh, but, you know, it, it's their fun day out. Realistically, this wasn't set up for a guy to sit on his laptop <laughs> and install Ubuntu. It was set up for kids to go, like, do wrestling moves well, on each other in a safe Dave, environment. Dave, let's not, <laughs> let's not pretend you were the problem. The problem clearly was the children. Okay, <laughs> the problem was the children. Um, like if the, if you have if you have a place, and you have to have, you know, I'm not usually one for safe spaces, but <laughs> I think every bouncy castle funland should have a safe space for a geek to install Ubuntu on his laptop at. I mean, that's there just would there was definitely cause for a soundproofed area for the kind of like the, the kind of parents or like groups of people had brought kids, and like. You have to have an adult in there to supervise them. But, like, some of the adults were, like, looking after bags or, like, just didn't want to bounce. They were in the cafe. And as I said, the cafe's two metres away from the screaming children. And then the screaming children come out from bouncing. Uh, and they're all tired, but they're, like, super excited because there's, like, um, sweets and shit. So they're also screaming in the cafe. There would be a nice, there would be a nice for a safe space for grown-ups just to sit and not talk. And just like put put some noise cancelling headphones on and just like not not be there, um, which would be quite nice. Um, so yeah, it's all Ubuntu eighteen oh four. Um, I um, I encountered a, a an issue that's happened twice at this point, 
uh, in terms of like, so yeah, installing went fine. Installing was great. Uh, they've added this um, minimal install checkbox, which uh, some other distros like uh, Zubuntu had previously as like a separate ISO. It kind of just comes with like the core operating system, a terminal, and a web browser. And from there, you can install whatever you want. So it doesn't install games. It doesn't install LibreOffice. Uh, it doesn't install... Um, it, I don't think it installs a um, spell checker, which is a bit weird. Um, but I guess you don't need that, but I installed that. Uh, so that went in really quickly, set it up. It's all really nice. Um, Unity is a lot nicer in GNOME. So if people haven't been paying attention, um, uh, Canonical decided that Unity, the desktop manager, was a crap idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, it just and took him like a decade to come around to it that. It took him quite... <sighs> so th- this is the thing, like, um, I think it the layout is fine. Because secretly, I turned Windows into basically Unity. I put... In, in that I have, like, the icons on the this vertical bar on the Oh, side. no, you're not doing that as well. I am, because oh you got... Because there's loads of horizontal space, but not as much vertical space. Uh, also you do you realize t- that I have uh, an, an uh, ultra-wide screen monitor, right? Yes, you should put it on the side. Um, no, there's not but- much space there. <laughs> like, uh, like, those icons, I get it, like, yeah, I did this. Like, I need to do this when I stream... Um, PUBG because I need to put it in a uh, in a in a HD window, right? Yeah. So at the bottom of the screen would be cut off where the I can auto hide it. I can do that, but I I, I try to put it on the side, and it's mm. just like I've got so many it- items in my like <laughs> start quick launch bar that it Oops. has like a screen bar, a horizontal <laughs> a, a scroll bar. Yeah. Okay. So if you have loads of those, um, it's it's bad. But if you have a minimal set, so like I just have like Chrome. Files, Discord, Steam, Sonos thing, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, and Spotify. Those are the ones like I, the core things I have. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like how I use it. But yeah, the kind of like Ubuntu. I, I, I maybe you know maybe, maybe the core thing is that I'm not picky about my user interfaces. Like uh, listening to the late night late night late night Linux guys. Like there's like uh, Joe really loves um, XFCE. Um, and then Phelan really likes KDE, and they're like, no, I like this, is like, how my brain works, and that, like, I, I know how this works, and I use it, and I'm just like, give it, like, two weeks, and I'm just, like, up to speed. I might not be, like, a power user of GNOME or a power user of KDE, but, I like, I'll get everything done. Um, so I'm not, like, I'm sort of, like, platform agnostic in that way. So, yeah, they, they, they moved away from Unity to go back to GNOME, uh, with GNOME 3, or Shell, whatever it, actual bit is called and they've kind of reskinned it a bit to look like unity used to so they've got like the bar on the left hand side um some concessions have been made like uh, the close buttons on the right hand side now which to be honest really fucks with me now because i'm used to it being ubuntu so the button should what, be on the they left changed hand side. the buttons yeah by default the buttons are on the right hand what? side of a window and there's what no, like, they, 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 I, they, they came around to that yeah, they came with wow. that, but by which time I'd got used to the previous way. So whatever. It's it's um, almost like they listened to what like 2010 Linux Outlaws. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> they fiddled with the, the 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 global menu bar. That's a bit different, but I can't describe why. I feel like there used to be the close buttons up there as well, um, but no longer. Um, but other than that, just it just feels like Ubuntu with like a slightly refreshed, um, more. Uh, it's it's like a it's a slightly more flat design. Uh, there's like less bezel-y bullshit, less kind of shiny shit. It's more kind of just like, here are the icons, which is quite nice. Um, so I installed that. It's great. It worked straight away out of the box um, because it's a Dell XPS 13 and they ship that with Ubuntu. Everything is like, just works flawlessly. All the keyboard buttons work nicely. Closing the lid works nicely, which compared to the last time I bought a laptop and put Linux on it is a good move. Um... Yeah, um, the keyboard backlights work, which I was kind of expecting to break. Uh, wi- Wi-Fi and Bluetooth works out of the box. All the ports really nicely. I've not, tr- I've not tried um, using USB-C to HDMI yet because I've got one of those, uh, which I, I think might. I don't know. It, I assume it should work because it ships with Ubuntu on it sometimes. Um, so yeah, I was super impressed with like just how well that works. But I mean, that's going to be like your best case scenario of how well something works is like the thing was designed with a Ubuntu in mind, or at least they put patches in to make it work. Um, you're not going to get better than that. 
Uh, and I've been kind of just using that, and it's really quite nice. There's uh, one bug I've had that's a little bit annoying. Well, two, okay, there's two. Um, sometimes if you open VLC uh, with, like, a video of something, a totally not pirated video, um, it doesn't open with, like, the video. You have to grow the window. You, know, you, you change the window size. Like, the audio is playing. I'm like, this is definitely not ba uh, Babylon 5. Um I, I can hear the audio, but not see the thing. That's a bit weird. Uh, and one where I, I just like the desktop environment just doesn't launch, but kind of does. It gets halfway. So you, you, you get the log on screen. You, you log in. It's like, great. Password's correct. You get a mouse and then just sort of sits there with a cursor. Let's point out that this is out that this isn't released yet, right? So just in what, case. What, 1804? Yeah, it totally is. Oh, it's 1804. I thought you were yeah. using... Oh it yeah oh yeah it came out last week wasn't it oh, yeah yeah right, yeah yeah like, eighteen oh four but like the the I'm point confused. one eighteen oh four point one the kind of the, so when you when you do a distro upgrade from like LTS to LTS um, you only get the the GUI telling you there's so if you if you're on sixteen oh four right now you'll only get the GUI upgrade in about a month's time when eighteen oh four point one comes yeah, yeah, yeah. Out. no no I I I forgot that this was released sorry I. Yeah, so so there's this. this, this I, I've not yet googled it to work out why it's happening. But I've like, been it really busy, people. Sorry, <laughs> it happened like on the second boot, which like I'd not done much tweaking at that point for it to fail. So I'm like, this is a bit weird. Uh, so I'll probably dig out like some some like documentation on why that's happening. But it's a bit annoying that like you just have to like power it off, power it back on, and then it just works. It's fine. Like it, it nothing bad happened. Other than like twenty seconds of my life was wasted, um, but as part of that, I've been kind of like on the open source like train of doing stuff with open source tools and uh, <laughs> I mean do closed source stuff as well. But like playing around with things I've not really played around with, like um, snaps uh, are really good. I really like snaps because um, you could just install random shit. Uh, like there is a. Uh, there's a Sonos uh, controller that you can install with a snap. Uh, I submitted a pull request because it's a bit fiddly to get going. So update the documentation for that. Uh, I've been doing open source fab. It's fantastic. Um, the Discord, like Discord has like just a Linux client. I totally no, blew my no. mind. I thought all the Linux people in the Discord used the web browser, uh, which um, is a little bit annoying because like it doesn't ship updates. So... Uh, today, like, I loaded it, and it was like, there's an update to the client. I'm like, well, why aren't you just applying it? Because uh, Linux weirdness. So uh, it's uh, Snaps. I mean, Snaps the Ubuntu thing, right? Yeah. Have yeah. you ever used Flatpak before? No, but like, it looks like the same kind of thing. I have no opinion as to it is one better than the other, but I think, like, as a solution... So you generally like the idea of... As a solution to kind of m lots of depend like lots of different version dependencies... Um, I think it's quite nice. The kind of the user interface of well, not even just like the command line of like just do snap install, like do um, like legacy or like classic something you had to install with classic mode because um, it required some extra privileges. Uh, the Sonos one you had to do dangerous, give it the dangerous argument because it can't something's not signed correctly uh, on the build, which uh, me and the man who did the code are baffled by because like well surely it just works. Um, so yeah, it's really good. And I've been using Atom because you said it was good. Oh no shit. Wow. Holy yeah, crap. It is a bit, it's a, it's, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, it is not a snappy, uh, snaps. Uh, it's not a snap. <laughs> it's, it's not as snappy as sublime text. Um, but like, it's good. I, I, I like it. Um, it, it's a text editor, right? So it, it edits text. It's nice. It uh, has packages you can install. I've installed quite a few packages. I'm currently trying to work out how to sync settings between devices. Uh, it seems possible um, without just like making a repo of your setting files and cloning them. Um, but like, yeah, but I've been using that to like at work. I've been doing some JavaScript stuff, so I've been kind of using Atom for that with its like. JavaScripty friendliness, um, which is nice. Uh, it it does kind of fall over a little bit with loads of files. So when you when you when you're writing Node things and you do like Node in, like npm install the project and it downloads like four billion dependencies to like 
it down as like left pad and like integer checker and all that like bollocks that JavaScript things have. It does kind of fall over with like thousands of files, which I feel like I've compared with Sublime. And Sublime kind of like chugs along a little bit, but it doesn't sort of fall over. Uh, it, In my defense, <laughs> I use this to write articles, right? There, yes, there are thousands, like, thousands of files involved. Yeah, but the, you, what you can so like the kind of it, 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 if you have those fi- if you have let's say like when you install node packages, it puts the dependencies in a folder called node modules, and it basically tries to index that. Um, and there's a command for it's Control T, and you can start typing in like a name of a function, a name of a file, a name of a class, or whatever, and it'll try to find that. Um, when you have by default out of the box, it doesn't ignore uh, node. Uh, modules uh, so it tries to index these thousands of files and it just sort of in, like, it, it chugs a little bit I'm not going to lie uh, but you can go go into the settings and add that file to like just ignore anything called this because you, you, you don't care about it uh, which is nice um, so yeah I, I've been enjoying it and it's, it's nice because I mean I paid for Sublime Text 2 so I have a Sublime Text 2 license that doesn't bother me uh, about using it but Sublime Text 3 I have been using for a reasonable amount of time, but either not without paying because you're allowed to do it. It just bothers you like every 10 times you save a file, it says, would you like to buy it? And I'm like, nah, it's like $80. Yeah, I already want to. And at this point, like, um, I feel Atom has come sufficiently far since I tried it in 2014 when I first tried it and it just was horribly slow. Uh, I could, like, I was opening like reasonably large text files from like my degree of just like data and it just fell over so i've opened some of those ones that i dug them out on a hard drive and was like okay it, it, it handles them a bit better now which is nice um so yeah i'm like fully on the linux train again sort of i mean i'm recording this on windows 10 because oh i should try i was um preemptively plugging uh the microphone into the laptop uh and it did not detect it which is fun um, what yeah, I just, Isn't I, I that just a generic USB audio it, interface. Yeah, that's that's the concern is that I have to. Maybe I've just forgotten how to configure these things. But like, I, got, I plugged it into the laptop. I was like, okay, it's powered on. This is good. Uh, go into like the sound devices, and it just doesn't list it. Um, I rebooted. Oh. Still did, reboot. I was like, okay, I've, I've just plugged it in. I had the window open. Maybe it hasn't refreshed. So I closed it. I rebooted the laptop just for like shits and giggles. And uh, turned it back on, and it didn't see it again. So I think there's probably some annoying tweak or setting I have to do. D de- 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 message. Do some de- yeah. De- mask while you plug it. Yeah, to, to make sure it can still see it. But it's like it it it. it well, it'll tell yeah. you if it's unknown. If it doesn't have a driver for it, it'll just yeah. Go blah, blah. Um, or whatever. Yeah. It's probably not D message anymore. Is it? It's probably just system I, central I, slash. I'll, I'll boot. I'll boot it up. All praise it. Leonard. All plays in it. Uh, yeah, so like the thing, things that are, are different back from from when I um, uh, used to do Linuxy things. Uh, everything is done with System D now. Uh, I don't understand why people are f- arguing about it. Like it's fine, right? It's it's just fine. Um, you 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 can add things to start up. It takes a couple extra lines, but like I mean, the whole operating system loads quickly. I don't have any issue with. I don't know Linux people being nerds um with that um they've not moved to wayland they're still using xorg well, uh, everybody's their... using xorg i think well no because like um fedora by... using wayland now i think fedora are going to use no it i think it's, it's installed but it doesn't use it per default i think i think ubuntu 1710 uh, uses um wayland uh but they did because this is a long uh, an lts they've gone for um going back to Xorg just because it's a known quantity so they can support it for like the next three, five years uh, rather than Wayland. Um, and the plan is um, one of the guys on the desktop team was saying that in that 2004 would be the um, the first LTS to use Wayland, hopefully. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, was it Dean? Yeah, Dean message is, is still a thing. Uh, obviously the microphone's not plugged into it anymore, so I can't tell. Um, but yeah, it's it's nice. I'm really enjoying it. The it, it's called cool. they've looped back round. I totally forgotten this had happened. Uh, in that they'd looped back round the alphabet because uh, after X they didn't do Y or Z. 
Uh, so it's back to Bionic Beaver, uh, which is nice. Um, they've got a nice. It's just. It's just. Re- it's really pleasant to have a thing. Oh, I think I'm. I'm. I'm once again far behind. I think Fedora Twenty Five already had Wayland by default. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I kind of like didn't really pay attention to that as well. Me neither. Was, was, uh, didn't change anything either, did it? Like it. Doesn't, yeah, yeah, I. I've I mean, I had Fedora Twenty Five installed. Oh, right. On my work <laughs> work computer, so it's not like I've I've. I've, I've so I you've noticed. been using you've been using Wayland for probably. Ages. Well, um, right now I, I for some reason I've gone back to Ubuntu because there was some problem with the CPU firmware. So hmm. I'm currently using Ubuntu, but like I had yeah. it on there and I've never noticed. Fair, but like the, the kind of the the initial setup things of Ubuntu, it just kind of like reminded me that of a, of what a nice setup is. In the, the first time I I turned the laptop on with Windows in it, it was just so infuriating. Like I'd al- like it had already had the operating system installed. I didn't have to sit through the process of installing it, but it still made it like a massive pain of like, hello, like literally, it, like the the first thing you do, Cortana starts talking to you, and like, hi, I'm Cortana. I right? talk yeah. to you, and would you like to? You can navigate this menu by talking to just me. I'm like, no, fuck it. No, nuke fuck it off. From like, orbit. No to everything. Piss off. Let me sign into my like my Microsoft account. No, sync my no desk- I don't even do that. I do because it syncs my wallpaper, which I think is just cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, so cool. that's really hard to do. That's two clicks. I know, right? Um, but like, it's in I my just, Dropbox. Like, just, I mean, just, come on, just like give me the fucking desktop already. Like, just do the thing. Um, so yeah, it's like it's getting like Windows installed was a bit of a pain. And I guess like when I've been building my desktop PCs, I've been putting um professional on it just like with a, a like a stock image so it doesn't have any of the bloatware on it but like having to go in and be like oh christ they've given me mcafee with this it's like oh god get rid of it burn it um was was a bit painful uh i thought so yeah oh so did you look at the windows on on that Dell thing yeah so i i i, I used it because i thought I, you nuked it immediately no so i i used windows to download and install the BIOS updates, firmware updates. Oh, that makes sense. Actually, that's so, good. So you got the patches. The yeah, heart, so I've got the I've the, got the heartbeat. The heartbeat, uh, not heartbeat. Yeah, the, I wanted to say heartbeat. <laughs> the Spectre and Meltdown yeah, patches. That, so yeah, that, I, I got that. I I downloaded the checker to make sure like, am I vulnerable? And like, one of them was already applied. Uh, I can't remember which one, but one of I'm them. I'm doing was, an audio emoji. <laughs> one of them had already been applied, uh, and I kind of shat myself. I was doing the BIOS update, but I did it, and it was fine. And I reran the check. I was like, yeah, it's great. I'm protected. Sweet. My PC is now slower and more secure. Joy. Um, which was nice. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know. I, I'm kind of like tinkering with writing some code outside work uh, to, to grow as a person and a developer. So. Open source code. Oh, on, yeah, on like, Linux. Open source code on Linux, you man. Nerd. I, I'm going to go to Fast Talk Live and I'm going to hold the laptop above my head and be like, I am one of you again. <laughs> Like, the last two years, I've come along and said, just fucking use Microsoft, you nerds. And then I've come back as a nerd. <laughs> You've I, gone, gone back on your on your recommendations. Got, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I definitely feel there's, like, still a... a um, obviously, like, if you're less technically competent, like, Linux is still, still not for you. I don't care what people say, like, oh, you can set it up and your mum can use it. Because some people's mums are really competent. But, like, it's just a bit shit to... If you don't know, like, about the command line, just don't give someone Linux. But, like, for someone who, like, use it... Oh, my God, I have so many opinions. Um, For someone who, like, just wants to have a desktop PC to do, like, play games and, like, browse the web and do some stuff, like, Windows is fine. Like, it is just fine. It's minimal. In theory, Windows 10 should keep you nice and updated and patched. Um, I've recently been battling that, because it turns out um, PCs that don't get booted a lot do not play well. I found uh, both with Linux and um, and, and Windows and, and like machines that you get turned on rarely. When they seem to like apply loads of patches, they just don't go as smoothly as like my PC. So like I have this kind of idea that like I treat my PC well and it, it like gets well, updates really frequently and like I I, I like I install one patch and then like that, maybe I reboot. That sometime. changed in Windows as well though. I mean that depends on. Yeah, you're right. If you only boot it every few months. Um, but the thing that changed is it, it actually, you know, Microsoft went to a Linux release model. So they're, mm. they're basically now... Um, it's like a rolling release now, isn't it? Well, no. What I mean is like they have a big update every year, which even mm. has a year number like Ubuntu. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and what they do is basically cre- clean install. So it basically, mm. you know, every time it just downloads the whole um Yeah. Which is which basically uh, th- operating this system and puts all your data to one side and then puts your data back in once yeah. it's Yeah. There's this Windows 10 machine that like for some reason some updates failed, maybe it got powered off during an update. Um it thought it was on the latest version of Windows, but definitely wasn't. And there were various patches that just wouldn't go in. So I just I just downloaded the um update at all and it just reinstalled Windows copy all the settings over and it worked really well. Mm. Um, but like, and they yeah. will also do these roll up patches now, like windows update. Yeah. Which is like, I, I, I don't know how I feel about this. Cause I think those, and this is entirely kind of like a couple of data points that I experience, but people's PCs. who I keep up to date, irrespective of operating system. I find the kind of roll up patches, either if they're literally patches that are rolled up, like, We've taken four patches and it's now one patch. Or if it's like there are four patches and we'll just install them consecutively. No, no, I have no. The, the roll-up patches are one patch. No, no, but this is what I'm saying. I'm saying independent of whether or not it's a roll-up patch. All if right. you're doing loads of patches at the same time, I feel like generally the stability of the systems isn't as good as when I'm doing yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, that's I'm like, probably it. But what it will do in theory is just like roll it all up. So, hmm. so, so let's say so. It used to be you had a, you had a major Windows release. And then till till the next service pack, if you if you if you patched it right, you had to install every single patch after one one of each other. Yeah, and there's some like little hacks. But and yeah. now at every patch Tuesday, so every month, they take all those patches that came out in the month before, mm. and make one patch out of it. Yeah. And I see. Like- I think even it takes more. More than like the month, like it takes the month together. So after three months, yeah, I think I, it'll just it, be it, one patch. With- I just kind of feel like those aren't necessarily as well tested as just the individual patches because, like, just from my experience, things just tend to go wrong when these when these multiple like roll up patches or or just bulk patching just seem to not go well. Versus mm. my experience of machines that get patched immediately and then like rebooted or just like used, but like there's probably a blog post about that that someone can correct me on these things. But um, yeah, that's the thing. That's 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 my PC technology thing for this time. Next thing probably just, is going to be re- replacing a router with something not shit. Just um, just wait till you get into dependency hell. Oh well, I'll I'll just start Again. writing. Snap applications and uh, it'll be fine. Well, Snap doesn't help you with like what I mean is actually updates for, for for the operating system. You know, with eh. Linux, sooner or later you get in this in in these things where just one dependency just fucks over for some reason. Like you have, I don't know, you have let's say you have the Spotify thing installed, and it's got some really weird repository, and they're fucking. Uh, mm. uh, they're fucking key like like uh, digital signing like they're you know, code signing key just timed out and then, you know, because you're using the GUI, it doesn't tell you that there's like one fucking repository that you added that can't update and it just keeps failing on the updates. Mm, but you can install Spotify with a snap. Well, yeah. Now so hopefully, it hopefully anywhere. all of those document, all those dependencies are going to be settled so, up. So how, anyway, how, how does that get updated? Um, so people who are developing the Spotify snaps. So I think it's actually Spotify who do it. Um, they will... Right, update. yeah, they're making new, new snap. I know they're, that, they're making a new snap and that'll get updated. So in theory, you'll be running older dependencies. But no, no, what I mean is because I never used, used that. Uh, in Ubuntu, snap- does, does, the, does the software, uh, software Alleged- center check for snap updates? Al- allegedly, snaps update themselves. Okay. Uh, uh, according to Martin Wimpress, snaps magically update <laughs> update themselves in the background, which I am led to believe is a fact. Uh, I've not yet proven that because I don't know. How, I, I literally have no idea how to prove that. Like, if they do happen in the background, um, I I won't I won't notice it. I'll have to like manually check version numbers in like about sections, or um, or I, I don't get the update and it never gets updated, and I'm like, oh, obviously there's no update. Well, if, so if you if you have. Um if you have something like Discord installed, you'll you'll. Oh yeah, like Discord tells you you need tells, to do it. No, so. no, it also yeah. tells you that when there's an update and they have released, they show you what they changed, so you'll know. Yeah, as as far out. as far as I can tell, there's uh, no Discord. Um, there's no Discord snap. So, by the way, why why you've been doing that? I've I've looked back at in this Wayland thing, and I think I remember why I didn't notice. Mm. Uh, you know that Wayland has this thing where it can run like uh, X11 apps. It does some weird shit. It, it, it uses it runs as a 
as an X, X server server. If, you know, it, it kind of you just kind of don't notice. Like if an app uh, doesn't support Wayland, it basically it, spawns it a thing. Back. No, it's like it spawns a thing that that is like an X server that oh, the app okay. thinks it's running in an X server, but it's actually. But it's not. It's like an X server running in a Wayland. Yeah, okay. it's something like that. It's just probably technically completely wrong, but uh, I, it sounds awfully plausible. Something, it, it, something it, container, something. I can something tell you, it, it, it has worked so good that I've never noticed that I was running Wayland. Nice, <laughs> nice. That's really nice. Like that's good. I, I like that. Uh, anyway, let's move on from um, boring tech Linux chat. You went to London and uh, did some things. You 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 you, you, you raided some tombs. Yes. So I uh, this was really cool. Um, I was actually invited uh, to the uh, world premiere of uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which mm. they had in London, I think, in Vancouver and in LA. And nice. in 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 London, it was in the Welsh Chapel in the West mm-hmm. End, a uh, lovely old building, um, which they had made up uh, to look like a Mexican carnival, Ooh. because Shadow of the Tomb Raider is set in uh, and in Peru, like in South America, and, you know, in Mexico, the scene. Um, so I was actually one of the first people who could got to play the game. Um, there's, and there's like a scene where you're in a Mexican fiesta. Um, yeah, and it was, uh, it was, it was really cool. Um, obviously, I'm a Lara Croft fanboy. People might have been, might have know by now. You know, I've talked talked about these games before. Mm. And um, yes, so unsurprisingly, I really liked it. Um, yeah, it was uh, it it was it was kind of cool. They had a, like you know they had some guys there from uh, Ados Montreal. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think yeah. So it wasn't in Vancouver. It was in Montreal. I think the the other event. Anyway, um, and talking about the game, and you you could talk to them. They had some Lara cro- cosplayers. Um, I think pretty much the whole uh, European gaming press was there. Um, but sadly, I didn't recognize many people because it was really dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to see. Um, well, I, I was on the you know on the on the flight over with some some dudes, especially I was flying from Hamburg, so, so some guys. Um, I met some guys from Rocket Beans, which is like a streaming. Um, it's probably Germany's biggest game streaming thing. Um, I've never heard of it. They're from Hamburg. Well, they're just German. Like, why would do you? they stream in German? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're like ah. on Twitch or whatever. They're the biggest German streaming thing, I think. And they actually. Uh, they show I, I knew them before because they show CT Uplink, like the 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 podcast I do for CT. Uh, the video podcast they show that on Saturdays. Ah. Um so I kinda knew them before and then, then you know, some 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 other nice people. Yeah, and then I got to play the game for about forty five minutes. Um cool. Are you allowed to talk about Yeah yeah, yeah sure. The, I, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah. Um so it's 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 very much like um, so their whole pitch is like you know it's like a trilogy. I actually didn't realize that before, but like it's the 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 you know the Tomb Raider reboot. Um, so they've made it as a trilogy. So Tomb Raider, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and now Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And at the end of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Lara becomes the Tomb Raider. So yeah. Lara becomes, um, you know, the character that she is before the reboot. Right. So, so okay. So about, after the second one, she is canonically a Tomb Raider. No, no. After the third one. Sorry, after the third. So, oh, so the first sorry, one, sorry, she sorry, was sorry. basically just, uh, uh, you know, a, a teenager, teenage girl, uh, student, got stranded on that island. Mm-hmm. So the 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 their the headline for the first game is basically uh, survive. Like she's a survivor, is surviving. Um, mm-hmm. The second one, um, she does go. She raids some tombs. Um, funnily, they they kept using uh, tomb raiding as a verb, <laughs> which I don't think is a verb, but I think they're making it one. Um, so the second one, you have some tombs, but she's still not like, you know, she's not the badass adventurer she is in the original games. Mm-hmm. Um, she's, I mean, so the, in the first one, if, so what the, the, they had like these pillars, right, on on, on their presentation. Right, they saying the first one you are hunted. The second one, what are you doing, by the way? Are you building just, Warhammer? I you just, uh, I just snap install Discord. Right. Uh, oh, is that sorry. your keyboard? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Ah, right. So the, the audio so, so connection is so good that I can hear it now. 
Oh, look at this. This is the future. I thought oh, you were clipping spruce. It sounded like you're, you're, you're clipping spruce. No, I, I know. I'm, I'm amazed. There's, there's, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm just... oh, you're, you're snap installing shit. Okay. Linux is great, Fab. Linux is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I, that somebody else gets to tell me that. I mean, oh my God, I've come. <laughs> this whole thing's come full circle. So Excellent. podcasting shit. Anyway, so, um, and and in, this, in the second game, she's hunting. And the whole thing about the third game is like, she's become like this master hunter. So I haven't played like the the scene I played. She starts like in a it starts like in a Mexican fiesta. You follow like this Trinity guy. So basically, Lara hunts Trinity now. You know the secret organization that killed her father. Yeah. Um, and then you go down to a like a Maya um, temple, and then you go into the temple. But like a big big part of the game, which I haven't seen yet, is like the jungle. Um, and mm-hmm. she's beca- like with, with your skills, she she becomes like a. a guerrilla fighter you know she's a perfect jungle fighter um so there's all these where you have like you know um vines and shit and even in that thing where i played it has like these vine walls and if you go into them the enemies can't see you Mm -hmm. and she like creeps along in the vines and then ambushes them so they have all these like so uh, the jungle is is like supposed to be a huge thing. Like it's it's both dangerous. There's dangerous animals and shit, but it's also like your asset. Like you can you know how how these games, the new games, always had like this um, stealth component, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, now like yeah. your weapon. You can hide in the jungle and you can use the jungle to your advantage and shit like that. And the thing they're promising is that tombs will be even more important than the second game. I mean, the first game people didn't have enough like the. Yeah, the, the there, players weren't many, there weren't many tombs to raid in a game called Tomb Raider. Yeah, they were admitting that people were like complaining about that. And so in the second, they doubled down on tombs. And the second one had some really good tombs. Mm. But they were still not part of the main story. And now it's mm. part of the main story. So the story apparently is that... Um, so the part where I played, you go down into this Maya temple. And basically you're trying to follow Trinity. And you, you know they want to raid this... Um, this tomb for whatever you know because there's like some weapon in there whatever and so Lara tries to be there first mm-hmm. and as far as I can tell I mean just pay in mind that this is like all pre <coughs> sorry pre-release code um, yeah and you know it could all change narrative wise or whatever um, she steals this dagger and basically starts the Mayan apocalypse and then the rest of the game is, I think you need to, like, like next thing you know, is this tsunami in, in the middle of Mexico and, like, you have to swim for your life. And so the rest of the game is apparently then Lara trying to stop the Maya apocalypse. Okay. Which I find that's a, it's a bit of a weird trope because it's like, wasn't that, like, five yeah, years like a, ago? That was a 2012 thing, wasn't it? That was, that was when the... Remember, yeah, it's been a while. I think it was. I think that whole, like, 2012, uh, like, the film 2012... Uh, and stuff like that was kind of all about. I wonder about. if it if it if it if it sat back then. Uh, Although yes. it can't really because you, you can't really because like they were always set in the you know the first game was what twenty thirteen, and it was uh, and it was it, it was set like it's called Tomb Raider like. Yeah, no, no but like it's twenty thirteen because it's like that was the year it was released. But when when actually is it's, it? Set? I think it was set in that. Uh, oh okay. Or, or then the bouts. I think it's set in the about the same. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, I, I don't think it's ever explicitly said when it's set. Well, it we'll, kinda does. we'll see. Yeah. If she mentions, like, <laughs> uh, uh, if she meant, oh, I, I bet there'll be a line in it being like, well, actually, like, we all got it wrong and uh, uh, there, was an, there was an off by five error yeah, m- or an off, m- off by six error. Yeah, yeah exactly. With the, with the constellation, there was some stuff in the trailer where she talks about, like, constellations changing or whatever. Yeah, so no, actually, the end of the world is 2021. She's trying to stop it, rather than 2013. Something like that. Yeah. So um, they, um, what I, what I really liked is like the in the fiesta. There's just like people there, and you basically mm-hmm. have to to go through. Uh, so the Trinity leader is like moving through the market, and everybody knows him. You're trying to track him, like you, like this fiesta thing. She put a mask on, whatever, and mm-hmm. you have to go past people and try to find him and ask for clues and whatever, and. Um, Bear in mind that I was already pretty drunk when I played this, so if there was something wrong. I'll I'll come to that later, the drunkenness part. Um, so it's actually the first time there's like lots of people in a place in one of these games in a Tomb Raider game at all, 
And mm-hmm. there's like a little thing when, when she's like, um, so Jonah's is in it again. And she's, she's like, Oh, Jonah, but she's like, Oh, I'll, I'll go in this direction. You go look there. And she's like, um, yeah, you'll have to ask the people. And she's like, yeah, you know, people aren't my thing. <laughs> like <laughs> not to the fact that they're never people in Tomb Raider games. Um, and then the ones who shoot, shoot yeah. to well to be well dead. The mer- the mercenaries. So I kind of um, it's kind of like the other games. Is you know it 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 feels like that. There's jumping, which it's like two or three times I couldn't like I couldn't do it. I had to mm. ask like the the lady behind me to explain what I need to do next because I was <laughs> way too drunk. Um, also, it was really loud. Um, <clears throat> it was a really loud party. There was like a DJ going. I was I just had these headphones. They had to put subtitles on. So the thing that I could make out is that it, uh, the voice actor is Camilla Ludington again. Mm. So that's great. I love her. She, she she did a great job in the other two games. So I love that she's back. Um, and well, I I played it through though. I played the bit through, and it I really like it. Like the the bow is still good. You know how the bow is really good in the other games. Yep. Oh, it's um, so good. The bow is still good. Um, the assault rifles are still very satisfying, and the pistol is also nice. Um, so so it 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 looks cool. It, it looks quite good. I don't know how really how far there. I think fourteenth September it's coming out September fourteenth. That's not um, far away. No, and it was like they only had it on PlayStation. That was one of the reasons why I failed a lot because you know with those you know now push Y. First of <laughs> all, I fucking hate the Xbox controller. We we established this. I just don't like the, the chunkiness of it. And then all the button, like I've played Tomb Raider on the PlayStation. I played on the PC with the PlayStation pad. So I know all mm-hmm. the buttons there. But like when on there, it's just like the X is in the wrong place and what the hell is the Y and, you know, <laughs> it wasn't that easy. And the other thing was like on the, when you came in, they gave you this pass with like the layout of the place, which is like really confusing. This old like church building, really nice decorated, like with vines everywhere and stuff. And they had this thing, find the secret tequila bar. Oh. And and oh. I'm not a tequila guy, right? Not at all. But like... Um, I am if it's a secret tequila bar. Well, the thing is, like, they, I was there with this other dude. And he was like, okay, let's find this shit. And I was like, oh, well, I got a few hours till I can play the game. What else am I going to do? Took all the pictures <laughs> with the cosplayers and shit. Um, <coughs> so, um, I, uh, so, yeah, we found it. And there was this, turn out, there was this bartender mm-hmm. who now whole shitload of stuff about tequila. They had really good good tequilas there. Um and yes, I drank a lot. <laughs> nice. I got very drunk. Uh, this this sounds like the kind of uh the kind of press trip that we should be uh yeah. sort of protesting about. It was no, it was great. Ethics in video games journalism. I got to say I've got a I've got a um I've got a history of drinking with Screenix people. When I um when I worked in London, um, for the age, I lived in w- Wimbledon, yeah. And this Queenix office uh, was in Wimbledon. I they since moved, uh, mm-hmm. which I didn't know, uh, but they since moved. And um, so my local pub, which was a uh, Prince Prince William, I think I can't remember when it was called. It was it's uh, almost certainly called the Prince of Wales because every oh, pub- it might have been actually the Prince of Wales. Ev- I'm gonna quick Google uh, Prince Prince. Come on, come on, Google for you. Prince of Wales. Uh, when uh, Prince of Wales, Wimbledon, is, Green that, King, it's, boom. It's, is it is it next to the? It is. It is the Prince. Yeah. Is it? Oh. Yeah. It's next to the to the, the railway station, right? Yes. So, so that that was my local pub, <laughs> and and Queenix, uh, London was just around the corner. Mm-hmm. So I actually got like um, <sighs> there was um, <sighs> there. There was a, I mean, I, I, I was just drinking there, right? And so there, there were just these people sitting there, uh, and then they were talking about video games, and it took me a few times till I figured out that there were actually like Screenix people <laughs> talking about the stuff, and I actually I might have overheard some stuff back then. I mean, I was drinking with them. I might have, they might have told me some stuff I shouldn't have known, <laughs> but this was like. I mean, this was like a- 2013, a- 2012. Ages ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, it's it's all out of NDA now anyway. Um, but they were like, you know, games developers, like, you know, when you get them drinking. Anyway, so <laughs> so now I, I drank with lots of Screenix people again. You're still installing snaps. 
My mm, God. Uh, I finished typing now. No, it's, it's, it's not good. It's, it's all good. I mean, my, my keyboard is hella loud. I'm just, just, just curious. Just curious how many snaps there are. There are loads um, of snaps. So that was really cool. Yeah, so I did that again. Oh, and one, one amazing thing was, um, do you know who Clouseau is? Probably not, right? No, because this, this was posted in the Discord, and I posted a GIF of Inspector Jacques Gusto. So uh, Clouseau is, is a German uh, singer-songwriter uh, who obviously is, is not my kind of music. Um, mm. It's kind of pop, hip-hop, reggae-influenced stuff. And, um, chart, chart topping. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's well known. He's, uh, I know his name, right? He's actually mm. named after, he's named himself after that inspector, I think. Oh, really? Um, nice. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I knew the name, right? <laughs> so I'm outside smoking with, with, with some screening guys and like a German dude. Mm-hmm. And he goes like to this guy who stands next to us and goes like, can I have a picture? She's like, yeah, sure. And I'm like, what the hell am I not getting? I'm like, afterwards, I'm like, who is this guy? I don't know who this is. Oh, this is Clouseau. And I was like, okay, <laughs> well, I ended up drinking with, with that ah, dude. <laughs> that so sounds, that was fun. Uh, that's nice. Uh, yeah, oh, that's lots it. of tequila. That's all I can say. And it's a damn nice game. Not only because of the tequila, but I might have been a bit influenced. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I mean, you, you know me. If it was shit, I would have, you- I would have still said so. <laughs> Yeah, um, but Fab, a game I've heard is also excellent. Well, before we get to that, there's Ooh. one thing on the on the on the on the, the ethics and video games. Journey. So, so my <laughs> thing with these trips is like, eh, for me, that is actually not that bad because I mean, you go there with an expectation that what they show you is going to be good, right? Mm-hmm. They're not going to go like, do like a press trip with like 200 people and then and have ha- a shit. Yes, so the, the thing they're going to show you is going to be good, like especially if it's on Xbox. I mean, it's Probably so you can't just open the console and go, whoa, you know, let's crash. Uh, upload this, let's upload crash this, this to, game. Uh, yeah. So, so, but that obviously um, doesn't, you know, you don't know if the whole game is going to be good. You just know that that bit is probably not going to shit, be shit. Otherwise, they wouldn't, wouldn't show it to you. Hmm. But I think they got a pretty good track record, so, so I'm okay. So a game that's even better. Much, Battle much, tech. much better. Oh, my God. Battle tech. battle tech. I've fallen in a battle tech hole. You are you are deep in the law mines. Well, I'm I'm deep in the game. I'm like 33 hours in. Holy it shit! Came out like last week or something. Is this um? Is this is this like one playthrough of the campaign then? <laughs> is it, I'm not even. I'm maybe 25 percent through the campaign. What? It's, That's it's, bonkers. So I, I'm going to explain why later. First of all, battle tech, right? So something that um. So I knew this game was coming out. Then it kicked to start a campaign, whatever. I didn't back it for whatever reason. I can't remember. Um, it's by Hairbrain Schemes who also do the Shadowrun stuff, mm-hmm. which I own, but I never played because I just never got around to it. And Shadowrun's not like, it's just not one of the things I grew up with. You know how you grew up with some things and don't mm-hmm. with others? Yeah. But it turns out the guy who runs the company, I had no idea that the guy who invented Battletech also like, oh, co-invented it, also invented uh, Shadowrun. Oh, really? So the guy is he's one of the founders of the company. He, he took the IP with him. I mean, Faza got bought up by Microsoft back in the day and then completely disappeared and whatever. And there's Mac Warrior Online, which I've tried to play, but I never really got into. Mm. Which is Yeah, more- I tried playing the Mac Warrior games and... Just, just, oh, my God. Well, I was a huge fan of, like, one of my most favorite games ever was Mac Warrior 3. Mm-hmm. Um, I recently wrote about this again. I did a blog post and I looked up the, the intro again mm. because I can still remember to this day. So this is like, oh, Mac Warriors, you want, was this, 98? Uh, for some reason, I had an English copy. This was one of the first games where I had an English copy. Yeah, 99, mm-hmm. this is, right? And I can still remember lines from that first mission briefing. I dug up the video and put it in the blog post uh, when when the guy goes... Within within two years, Clan Smoke Jaguar has been routed. I listen to that so often that it's like drilled itself into my brain. <laughs> nice. However, Galaxy Commander, uh, what is it? however, Galaxy Commander Brandon Corbett, the ranking Smoke Jaguar's officer, is still at large. <laughs> it's just like one of these things. Like, so so BattleTech, um, I've actually played ever before I ever got into Warmer Forty K, um, mm. because I had a um. Um, 
so in school i'm not i'm not baptized and in germany you have either a protestant or catholic religion uh in school like you have a in the curriculum right we had two hours a week mm -hmm. we had but religion and if yeah. you weren't baptized you could choose to go either into the catholic or the uh protestant one or you could say no my child shouldn't be indoctrinated with this bullshit because of our constitution and whatever you can say that so and i was my parents said what do you want to do and i'm like i don't want to do this shit so 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 we were sitting like all of us who didn't want any religious stuff in school we had we were sitting like in the sports hall mm -hmm. why other people had like sports uh, like for that mm -hmm. and we were, were sitting like on the benches on the side and we were supposed to do like homework But what mm. we actually did was like me and that other guy like reading BattleTech. He had all these BattleTech books and <laughs> read them. And oh, I actually fantastic. he had like the box set, and I later played it. I never owned any uh, any BattleTech games. Yeah, I like the box games, whatever. I just got into the video game later. But I loved the lore, and I'm completely back in the lore hole. It's got such great lore. It's so good. Um, it's like where it's it's about as deep as the 40k lore. But where mm. 40k has this thing, you know how 40k law has this thing where there's this totally deep law, but they have like this plot device with the warp and whatever that the law is not connected. So mm -hmm. you have all this stuff, but you don't re really have a timeline. Yeah, the, the, the universe is so big that lots of shit happens yeah, and so you don't really know when things happen. And it happens at the same time and you don't really know, you know, don't know what happens. on. The, and they do this because it's easier to write because mm -hmm. they don't run into shit. With Battletech, it's like, There's a timeline from from like 2620 <laughs> to 3100 and it's like it's literally it's like that campaign and then this campaign and then they invade it, like this guy invaded that planet and and then the clans invaded and then this clan guy got and if somebody dies they're dead like it's not like 40 it's like all this shit it's like all this history of all these mech warrior companies and all the b b battalions and it's it's awesome i love this uh shit This is some proper deep law. It's some proper really fucking deep law. It's almost too deep. Um, <laughs> and I've always loved the universe. It's it's uh, one thing it has in common with 40k that it's proper dark. Mm. Um, it's it's all these basically you have like mech warriors are basically nobles. It's got like these they're basically knights. It's kind of like knights in the 40k thing. Mm -hmm. I think they stole that a little bit from BattleTech. Um, where you have these nobles and 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 they will have like this ancestral battle mech which is like a 50 meter big robot uh which which they inherited and then they're like the king because you know you can't beat those things except with another battle mech like you just stomp on people and tanks and whatever the only thing mm. that's better than a tank is like a battle mech um and oh it's so good and this game so i i love the mech warrior games But that kind of simulation is obviously dead. We haven't had that for years, where you're like in the cockpit, right? You're with yeah. joysticks and you're, you're controlling the battle mech. And yeah. this battle tech is a, ro uh, a, a turn-based strategy game. Um, and it's, it's, it's very much in the vein of the original board game. It doesn't have, it doesn't have hex grid or whatever, mm. but it's like you have, you have, you have movement, you have initiative, um, facing is very important so your battle mech has, has different armor on the sides and shitty armor on the back and so what you do is like you move your mech and at the end of your movement you have like a turn you can you can turn it mm -hmm. and it's all this shit like if you get hit by lots of uh, rockets um, your your mech might fall over you have this meter like this unstable meter and mm -hmm. if it gets filled up it your mech falls over and your pilot takes damage and you have to stand it up and you lose initiative and if you're lying on the ground people can shoot at you and really easily and kill you and and, and it's like really good and now comes the best thing so mm -hmm. that's the turn-based combat right okay that's that's one thing but they married it with an XCOM style campaign oh. So basically, they took the best stuff out of uh, Mac Warrior or, or BattleTech, where you like a mercenary and you have a mercenary company, uh, and you're basically running a lance of four Max. Um, yeah. And every time, so when you get shot at in combat, um, you have this armor, which basically in the Mac Warrior universe is like free. Like you just put tons of armor on, and as long as it, they only destroy the armor, it doesn't matter because you can just put new armor on. But mm -hmm. then, if it goes through the armor, it destroys like internal circuit circuits that can blow the arms of your mech. 
Um, so the weapons are gone. They can shoot, um, like if they shoot an ammunition bin, the ammunition bin will explode and destroy lots of other stuff. Um, it's like in Mac Warrior, you have to manage your heat. Um, if your Mac overheats, it shuts down or stuff might explode. And the thing is, once you go back to the to the campaign map afterwards, you have to rep- you have to pay for all your losses. So you can mm. you can replenish your armor for free, but uh, replacing a limb and weapons on a Mac is like really expensive and takes ages. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and when in X uh, in XCOM you have like this this doomsday clock when the aliens gonna kill you like in the last one, um, X XCOM two. And here you just have like your money. And every month you have like a monthly revenue report where you have to pay all your Mac warriors. You have to pay maintenance for all your Macs. Um, and then basically if you run out of money, you're dead. Mm. So you basically, good. so you have to, so there's, there's story missions that as far as I can tell, they are not randomly generated. They're always the same, um, mm-hmm. which you can take. They pay, pay really a lot. You don't have to actually, you can just ignore them and just play the other game if you want. Um, but between that, you have to take like all these mercenary missions where you basically rescue like people that needs to get extracted somewhere. You tr- try to hunt down like lances of pirates, um, stuff like that. And you you basically need to earn money um, to keep your company afloat. And you have this really interesting system where you um, you can um, you have like a meter. Um, so every job has a max payout in money and a max payout in salvage. And with yeah. the salvage, you can basically say, okay, there's so so much, like, it might be two and eight. And that would mean that, um, so you destroy, all the mechs you destroy on the battlefield, they're pieces you can salvage. And the first number is two pieces that you can pick. And mm-hmm. so if it's two and eight, there's, you can pick two pieces, like there might be two mech parts or two, two weapons that are really nice or heat sinks or whatever. And then you get eight other pieces of salvage randomly. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And the point here is, um, for example, if you um, if you loot Mac parts, if you get three parts of the same Mac, uh, you get a new Mac of that kind. Mm-hmm. So if there's like ah. a so if there's like a let's say a Jenner, uh, a light Mac uh, on on the field, um, if you if you get three Jenner parts like over consecutive battles, let's say, um, then you have a Jenner Mac, and you can sell that. Okay, you can use it. And you need to always have more max than, than you know, like it lances for max, but you always need more because one might be destroyed and you're repairing it. And you also need more than four pilots. Um, mostly because, you know, the pilot, it's like XCOM pilots get injured. They might actually die mm. um, or they might get injured. And then, then it takes like days or, you know, for them to recover. And you have like this clock. And you have like a you have like a spaceship, and you can fly from system to system and like take jobs, or whatever. And um, you can upgrade your spaceship later on. So it's it fantastic. It's fantastic. It's basically XCOM, and the comeback is like Mac combat, and it's really nice because it's like it's it's really a um, uh, very simplified way of like of of goals in a video game because basically you're just make, trying to make enough money. To keep yourself afloat and trying to have enough parts um, and max that you can just always field max, mm. and of course you have the same thing that you always had in the Mac Warrior games. You can you can customize your max. You can put different weapons on there. Um, you can have different loadouts um, for different like if you have I've 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 two um, uh, two I've twice uh, two versions of the same Mac now. And I've just put different weapons on 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 those. Like I have a long long range version and a short range version. Yeah. Um, and so I can just choose whatever the mission like demands. Also, like you, it, it takes like days. It takes like several days to to reconfigure them. So you really don't want to do that if you don't have to. Um, yeah. Then you have problems. You might have a really good gun on a Mac, and then you know some fucking other guy shoots it off. Um and then it's gone. Like it might explode. And oh. then it's gone. And then that Shit. good gun gun Shit. is gone. Then you need like a replacement gun or whatever. It's um it's actually quite cool. It's it's a lot of fun too. 
That sounds great. I should definitely pick this up and play it. Yeah, I mean, you like big robots. I do. I do like big robots. I mean, I mean you can do the whole thing where you like um, uh, do melee attacks. Mm -hmm. So if you're close enough, you just like basically punch the other robot. Nice. Um, and it's like, uh, oh god, it's really cool. You can try to like just um, so you can try to just shoot um the pilot, like shoot the cockpit, mm -hmm. and kill the pilot just with by injury and have the mech mostly intact, so yeah. you can salvage it, or you can like sh try to shoot arms off and then salvage like the weapons that are on there. Um. <laughs> You can also, like, <coughs> I haven't been doing this because the thing, oh, God, I need to drink some water. Sorry, my voice going. Mm. After the tequila, I got the flu in that. Oh, God. Um, so you can basically, uh, you can, like, if, a, if a, so you not only can you get, like, money and, and, and salvage, that slider also has, like, a reputation slider. And you can rep get reputation with a faction, and then you get store discounts, you get better missions from them, whatever. But you can also pull back from a mission if you're like, oh god, my people getting slaughtered here, this is not good. You can withdraw. Yeah. And it's not like XCOM, where like you really, if you withdraw, you're like fucked, right? It's, yeah. That's never a good thing. That's a, that's a lose. Yeah, yeah, here actually it isn't. Like if, if your mechs are not beaten up, um, it might actually not. You you still get some money, but you don't get as you know. You, you lose reputation because people are like. You also have like a reputation rating from the mercenary review board, um, <laughs> which is a thing in the BattleTech universe. Um, wow. Where they basically you know it's like you're rating as a mercenary company, and you, that will take a hit. But you can do that a few times, and it's it's not that bad, I think. Um, so it's 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 kind of it's kind of new and it's cool. It's like big robots kicking the shit out out of each other. I just love the Max. You know, I've been oh god, it all comes back to me. I play this right, and yeah. like all these names, like Mad Cat, although Mad Cats aren't in here yet, but like stuff like that comes back to me. Oh, that's a hunchback. I know what a hunchback looks like from back then. Um, so, so the interesting thing also, this is like the original setting of the original game. So it's like, I think it's set after the third succession war. Right. Um, so in the very beginning, um, you might know, do you know anything about Battletech? Um, I am aware there was like this big empire that was, that was quite the inner successful. Sphere. Oh, that's and the then, Star League. Yeah. Yeah. And then that uh, kind of fell apart and people had this thing called the succession war about who would be in charge. Right. And then there were, yeah. Then there, then there were multiple of them because obviously no one really liked the result of the first one. So you, you probably know that there's like the inner sphere and the clans. Uh, yeah, the clans like the major mercenary people, right? No, no, no. The clans are like, so when the, so there was this thing called the star league, which was like this empire in the inner sphere. And when that fell apart, um, before the succession wars, there was like the, mm -hmm. the guy, uh, Kerensky, the guy who led their army, took like his whole army and went in exile out of the inner sphere and some border systems. Mm -hmm. And at this part of the story, they don't know where they are. Right. And basically what ends, I think, the fourth succession war or shortly after like the clans invade the inner sphere and then there's this whole thing of the clans which are basically um you know they're a bit like um space marine chapters mm -hmm. they have like this thing where they do where they clone people and shit like that right. um, but the thing is they have very different technology and different mechs so there were always this thing of the inner sphere mechs and the clan mechs mm -hmm. um and all this hasn't happened yet so there's like huge space for them to to advance this i mean you know I mean, they're probably at, if this sells well, there will be like a battle tech two, and at some point there will be like the clan invasion, and there'll be all these other mechs. Mm. And I gotta say, the um, they um, they really rendered the mechs really well. Oh god, yeah, it, does look, it does look really, really pretty. Well, it it's yeah for a Unity game. I really see Unity game. Yeah, yeah, it's actually not. Oh god, it would be a lot prettier if it was Unreal Engine, you know. <laughs> But it's like the Macs are rendered really well. Mm. Um, they do like a lot of the. It's it's actually you know the production value isn't as high as like the Mac Warrior games were right. So they do like a lot of the cutscenes and stuff. Um, you know how they do um, when they do paintings and they animate mm. stuff in in paintings. 
you know, yeah. and like the hairs of a character, you know, blow in the wind stuff. Um, lots of people don't like that. I actually really like that. Uh, and together with the soundtrack, which is some really like, um, like low key, um, classical music. It's one of those mm. soundtracks, you know, how lots of video game soundtracks get on your nerves after a while. Yeah. Um, this really doesn't because it's so low key in most places. It's just like some, yeah, some it's like nice 30, 33 hours in, you're still enjoying it. Yeah. I'm still liking it because it's just, it's, it doesn't get on your nerves. It's just like lots of, you know, strings, subtle yeah. strings. Most of the time it's really cool. Yeah. And I'm falling in the law hole. I, I figured out that the, the Mac warrior three, um, the story of the video game is a novel. Mm-hmm. And I read that and I kind of liked it. And now I've started with like the first, oh, the first battle tech novel from like 1986 or whatever. Are they, are they available on Kindle? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, are they even available <laughs> in EPUB, I think. Wow. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff uh, that Michael Stackpole wrote. Mm-hmm. You no, know, who's also a famous, he wrote a lot of Star Wars. Um, yeah. And he, he did a lot of battle tech law and stuff. So I'm, I'm getting into that now. Was it Decision at Thunder Rift? Yeah, that's the first one that I'm reading that right now. That is like the f- first one that ever came out. Oh, yep, yeah. so um, get ready for me for just the- talking about Battletech <laughs> Law for the next half year. Uh, it's 99p. On yeah, that, that was the other thing. It's like 300 pages, like 99p. Okay, that's I bought that. Bing. Bye now. Job done. Yeah. Let's give it, let's give it a whirl. Uh yeah, sweet. That's great. Should we um should we do the feedback? Let's 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 brace for feedback. We have a lot of feedback. Brace yourselves. Um let's do the tweets. Uh so we had some tweets. Um one lovely one uh from Cathanus. Oh yeah, I enjoyed Ka- that. Yeah. Cathanus Org who just says you just ha- you've just got to love Geek News Radio. Interesting and always funny. Oh, warm as my heart. Uh that's great. Yeah, and Craig Ramsey says, uh, Halt and Catch Fire, HCF, was also a joke instruction taking the piss out of the IBM S360 architecture's cryptic names now used when people find undocumented instructions that really shit the bed. We spoiler HCF features in that Zektronics assembly game TIS-100. Yeah, that game is bonkers. It's like, what if assembly programming was a video game? Uh, I... I would not like to do that. Yeah, I, that's that's cool. I'd never I'd never known that. We had um, another tweet. I think it was from, it's from uh, Mike. Oh, well, oh, the one from no oh god so somewhere someone um, yeah Grelba uh, in the Discord just jumping around a bit uh, had a comment on that as well um, talking about the um, a specific instruction. One common type of uh, halt and catch fire instruction would turn the address bus into a reader. In other words. The program will begin to loop by reading large amounts of data consecutively. This is one type of halt and catch fire method do- do- uh, documented in the creation of a halt and catch fire instruction for the Motorola 6800 microprocessor in the 1970s. So apparently it's this big joke among le- electronic engineers that I was not privy to. Uh, so that's nice. Well, that's now good. you are. Now we are. Uh, Mike sends us a link to um, the, the, the Bitcoin heist guy. Uh, he says, file, uh, file under, and in other news, um, BBC News, Iceland's Bitcoin heist suspect flees on Prime Minister's plane. Uh, which, if you didn't read it, uh, basically, um, God, he uh, there's this guy in us, and, and he, stole, he physically stole some computers, I think, which, which had uh, about $2 million worth of Bitcoin on them. Um, he escaped a local security prison through a window. Uh, and fled to Sweden on a passenger plane that was also carrying Iceland's Prime Minister. <laughs> uh, he had a ticket in another man's name and was identified through CCTV. I think he actually successfully escaped, but surely they have extradition treaties with them. S- Sindri Stor Stefansson. That's, that's a hell of a name. Sindri Thor. So, yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. Look at that guy. Yeah. Like, there's a picture of him on this tweet, right? And yep. there's Mike's avatar right next to it. Oh, there is, isn't there? Just imagine Mike yeah. with a beard, a little bit of yeah. beard and a different haircut. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it could be Mike's me stealing bitcoins. I'm going to call the police. I think <laughs> might have be even the, 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 the same eye, col- eye color. 
Uh, you see what you did there, Mike? I see. Yeah, this is a diversionary tactic. Trying to, oh, there's this other guy. There's this other guy in Iceland. Follow that guy on the on the plane. <laughs> yeah, on the Prime Minister's plane, you know, not on the oil rig. It's not uh, me at all. No, no, that's no. That's what he... That's what he's doing on the oil rig. It's 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 mining bitcoins on an oil rig, <laughs> getting that sweet sweet oil out of the ground just to fuel the bitcoin mining. Because <laughs> obviously, getting oil out of the ground is less financially efficient uh, than burning than the oil for the Obvi- of ov- obviously that's how it works. Definitely. Don't don't like um, oil rigs <laughs> generate the power they use from like burning off gas? I think from the I think so. Yeah, I, I would assume that's plausible. Maybe they could have um, like tidal or wave energy as well um, from being at sea. Um, w- with me talking about Atom, uh, Shaytal, uh, at Shaytal uh, on Twitter, says, arguing about Atom... Uh, oh, Christ, I've had a little bit too much wine, Fab. Arguing about if Atom or Sublime is the better text editor. Really? Real men use Vim, or at least Emacs... Uh, but besides that, I've heard good things about Atom recently. Dave might have another look or better learn Vim for coding. Um, yes, I did. I did. Look, I did look at Atom. What do you I'm need? Not... Um, what do you need a, com- a, a, a graphical user interface for anyway? <laughs> well, just use Cause... Vim on the command line. Fuck Vim, man. <laughs> Fuck Vim. The only. The only. You thing don't need ha- eight gigabytes of RAM, then. The only thing harder to exit than Vim is uh, is the European Union. The call on WQ. <laughs> um, there you go. That, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's I'm down. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on Emacs. Emacs is fucking atrocious. Fuck, fuck Emacs. Um, but yeah, no, I just I, I use Nano. I'm that I'm that peasant. Yeah, me use, too. If I, if I have I'm, to do, if I have to edit things not? on the command line, it's Nano. Uh, yes. Yeah, so in Discord, I I answered nano. this before, but let's answer it on the show. Uh, the bringer of cake um, adds us and says, are you aware that Chernobyl is in Ukraine and not in Russia? I hope. Oh, you are aware. I hope. Yes, uh, I think I brought this up, right? I yeah, am we were aware. Ch- chatting about sort of uh, how Russian game developers end up kind of with the kind yeah. of atmosphere. And we mentioned Stalker, which happens in Chernobyl. And but Pripyat, to be honest, the- I mean, the, the thing is, this was like Chernobyl was built in the USSR. Yeah, and at that point, like, I mean, Ukraine was in USSR. It's not Russia, but like, you know, it's it's I mean, v- it's very much the same cultural. I'm pretty sphere. sure Russia has different opinions about what it what and what isn't Russia. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of that's, course. That's that's my hot take. Um, and then we've got two bits from. Don't uh, let Nicholas. your takes be too hot, or you might get some of that. Uh, what what's that nerf agent called again? Uh, oh god, the 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 yes. What is it? It's a crap name. It's a crap name. It's a Russian it's name. Yeah, it's um, some num- Um, wait. Uh, I'm just going to Google. Fourteen. Uh, what was that thing called? Ah, uh, my god. Wait. Okay, Wikipedia. Here we go. Go to Wikipedia. A uh, Novichok. That's the last so so don't, don't slack name. off the Russian so you get Novichok delivered to I, I, King's I did, did not say any sort of value judgment whether or not <laughs> Russia's differing opinions on what and what isn't right. Or do you emoji. Good or bad thing. <laughs> this is the backpedal emoji. Do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> I like Nich- that. Let's make that official. <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, uh, Nicholas M.M. says, uh, he's quoting Shah and he says, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> Made me laugh out loud in the street. So yeah, when Fab said that, that was uh, great. Shah was a Brit, that was great. I listened uh, back and- to the episode and then I realized why she said it. And it was painfully long for me to realize yeah, that. And it was just, just like, like four was, minutes or something. It, it was it was quite painful. But I mean, we'd had the bears, we'd had the bevs. It was good. Um, Nicholas then says, uh, his, my face was slippers is about to explain halting. Uh, and it's a link to uh, RuPaul Drag Race gif of say don't fuck it up, um, <laughs> and I I kind of got there. Uh, it's it sort of I think um, the th- there was a cor- uh, someone somewhere corrected me on um, the um, halting problem, um, spe- specifying that it's if you look at the source <sighs> code of a program, it's whether or not the program will finish. 
not necessarily taking a pro the important thing is you're looking at the source code not necessarily running the program my god no it's what no then they, they don't have their priorities straight i expect <laughs> as much um uh as 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 much correcting as was going on there on on my fucking battle tech law if if i ever gonna you know quote a mac uh, type wrong i want to hear from you people yeah we'll we'll need to know if you get a if you get a Mac like serial number, I'll, I'll check check if a Jenna is actually a light Mac. Oh, imagine if yes, it is. Oh, yes, damn. it is. You got it right. The Jenna JR seven slash D <laughs> introduced in twenty seven eighty four. The fact that the Jenna was the sole property of the Draconis Combine was long a source of national pride. Designed, produced, and for over 50 years solely used by the Combine, the Jenna was meant to be a fast guerrilla fighter which would go on to form the foundation of highly mobile lances. There we go. Five sm Smithson lift the jump jets, two in each side. <laughs> I love this. So, so you know uh, when you when you look up back stuff, and then you mm -hmm. see that um, some some are just made by General Motors, <laughs> or there's like Boeing Interstellar, oh, or there's God, like right. lasers made by Krupp. So Krupp's nice. still around in twenty six, <laughs> twenty five, or whatever. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's good. They reformed, um, and then finally the last bit of feedback. Uh, Nicholas, uh, well and truly ignored. Charles orders and sent us a very long email. Shall I read that or do you want to? Uh, I, I'll, uh, you can do it. You can do this. Let's drink some water. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, friends. It's that time of the year again. This is not Nicholas' voice, but I'm, I'm making it up. It is that time of the year again. I'm writing a feedback email. Didn't he, like, his, 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 uh, his header for the email was a dreaded feedback email appears? Something like yeah. That. I was listening to this show and I got sad when you talked about how computers are becoming more and more dumbed down and closed. People don't do cool stuff anymore and Raspberry Pis are used as drawer stuffing. But then I stopped being sad because I realized you fucked what fucked what's are wrong. Okay, <laughs> maybe maybe not wrong, but you seem to have a perspective <laughs> on things that's very different from mine. So I thought I'll break the law of char, <laughs> love that, and write an email. As you may or may not know, I'm a Linux dev and somewhat active in the open source community. And my god, is it alive and well. Nothing that runs any sort of software you have used today would work without free software. I don't know. Um, anyway. I, uh, <clears throat> I could live quite happily in a m Microsoft world. <laughs> I know you guys know this, but it's worth pondering it from time to time. Actually, my thing is Audacity. I use that a lot. Could probably couldn't live with that. Um, sorry. I know you guys know this, but it's worth pondering it from time to time because even I take it for granted sometimes. And who makes free software? It's people using their computers to do cool stuff. That isn't going anywhere. In fact, it is progress. It used to be a bunch of lads emailing patches around, then stuff became more organized with VC VCSs. Now we have open source projects which are better organized than companies with code of conducts and minority empowerment programs. Progress. Did he just claim a cock is progress? Uh, if yes, I will disagree. You know with what I love? On this, I, I will agree with him on this. <laughs> cocks are good. Uh, cocks are not progress. <laughs> anyway, I, it cracked me up. I was looking into the uh, Battletech um unity project to find something earlier mm -hmm. and there was a there was a text file there called uh, git checkout or something and there was just like a text file with the git um checkout um, hash in there <laughs> that cracked me up um i could go on and on about this i believe you have i've been <laughs> going to conferences oh! for years and the audience becomes more and more diverse Journalists with no tech background whatsoever start up start picking up tools to do data analysis and enter the community. But I've been going on for too long already. What I th and he keeps going on for a while, <laughs> by the way. Um, what I think is happening is that while the power user market is growing, the casual user market is growing even faster. So naturally, we see more products tailored to that audience and it eclipses the power user market. But that does not mean the power user market is going away. 
I don't know what Microsoft and Apple are going to do, but I doubt both will go full iOS model. And of course, I know Linux isn't going anywhere. Finally, I recommend anybody, uh, anyone to go out and experience it for themselves. Go to conferences, go to meetups and start conversations with people. We need like an, an anthem playing in the background for this. Um, you don't have to be an expert. At my local Python user group, we regularly have absolute noobs show up and it's perfectly fine. That's it. Keep up the good work and uh, I can't do this. You know, I love you. Cheers, Nicholas. <laughs> Rapturous applause. I think that's good. I, I can't, I agree. I, I think I think when I, I feel super depressed that the world is shit, I think that I think the things I said previously, but like optimistic Linux using Dave feels this way. You you just want a Nicholas motivational speech. Yeah, you do. You just want him to like write a speech to like get you out of bed in the morning, be like, "You're gonna get up, you're gonna go to work, but you're gonna make a difference, and it's gonna be great." You should record that, and we put some music, and then put some like a video with like flying, you know, flags and stuff. We we put we put we put like the Russian national anthem behind it. Oh yeah, that's yeah, and with like MIGs flying overhead. Oh yeah, exactly. Yes, and tanks. Thanks. Um, battle just, max battle max exactly <laughs> um i i think i think he's right but um still i wanted to make one one small point um i think he is right but the thing is um the thing that open source on i mean the thing we have you don't think that 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 apple and microsoft are going full ios with apple i'm actually not that sure it would actually be great for them and their business model um with Microsoft, I don't think so. Microsoft's been been approaching Linux a lot more. I mean, hell, they have their own Linux distribution now. That, that's um, a topic for another time. Yeah. Um, but, like, the problem is, you are right, but, like, at, at some point, if the, par- if, the, if the normal people market is just so big, you will get companies just making hardware for that. And the problem is, the one problem we have as the Linux and open source community is we've, we don't make hardware. And if anything, um, the Librem Five risk, uh, yeah. risk, whatever it is, Great. the risk architecture. So and the, <laughs> get the one ras- and try to run Visual Studio on it. At the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> well, the Raspberry Pi isn't. I think it now has open source firmware, but it uh, for a very long time. Also, not designed by any open source movement. You know, it's tr- designed by true. Broadcom. Um, this is true. But the thing is, like, we don't make hardware and. The thing I'm noticing is, um, I mean, you've you've been talking about your Dell and whatever, and I actually didn't get into that fight there. But like, the thing I'm noticing is hardware it doesn't necessarily work better with Linux now than it did like ten years ago. Um, with some stuff, it's actually going worse. Like if you try to dual boot Windows and Linux now, it it's it's major pain in the ass. The 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 battery life on on laptops with linux is still pretty bad compared to windows 10 um because it's not any fault of the open source software or the developers it's solely the hardware manufacturers not like optimizing it you know not like not working with the linux people it's not like the linux people wouldn't work with them it's like that it's just not a priority um and they're not like doing that so we still like reverse engineer everything for the drivers for the linux kernel so it's a bit shit um yeah it's um i don't know i I, i'm i'm not sure it's it'll get better um i think we're still a bit at the mercy of the the hardware developers and look whenever like somebody like canonical tried to do hardware yeah i I never worked a little bit of um software people tend to underestimate how difficult hardware is to software people are like, ah, oh, it's just hardware, it's just fine. It's it, obviously it's an elegant, lovely solution to the problem, but like they fail to appreciate the infinite complexity of I think, ev- everything. I think ever. it's not even difficulty, I think it's just expense. It's just expensive. Oh yeah, like, that's like, I, I kinda mean the and the same kind of thing. It is difficult, therefore it costs loads of money. Well like, I don't you can't yeah. you can't chuck like one guy at a no, so, I, yeah, make a processor. Like one guy's not going to do that. Like true, teams. but one guy's not going to do a kernel either. I think the the. the well, I mean, one guy did do a kernel originally. Well, yes, but you know, to be a kernel that people can actually use, you need a lot more people. No, I don't think actually. I don't think that is the problem. I think um, 
like anything we can i mean with the strength of the open source movement is that it can like it doesn't matter how hard the problem is it can tackle it it can scale we have tools like git and we just get more people working on it the problem with hardware is not that we can't actually like if we got people we could make design fucking chips we can't get them built because we don't have the money like there's going to be a point where some guy needs to put a few million down and say okay um rent that factory you know uh in 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 shenzhen right Mm. and get make all the tooling and then make all the fucking boards and we don't have we don't have that like we don't have um like the only thing that we could do that with is crowdfunding Yes. And, and oh. we've seen where that where that can run into problems. Or have Red Hat do it? Well, they, but the thing is, Red Hat is the only company I think that would have enough money, but they don't yeah. need to do it because here comes the other thing. This is all an end user dilemma. In the server world, I mean, Linux runs everything. It, run, it runs the fucking mm. web, and and all the servers work with Linux. See, there the, the manufacturers they have act, to do it. Yeah, yeah that the manufacturers actually care of making it work. And Red Hat doesn't care. Like, they're not designing... See, Red Hat's part of the problem, actually. Because Red Hat doesn't care for, for like, end users, right? They're, like, they're just, like, the back-end middleware company. And they just need that to work, and that already works. So why would they design hardware? Like, the whole thing. This, this thing Canonical did. You remember when they tried to design these servers? These, these, oh, these the, uh... flash servers that never went in? You know, these blade things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were, yeah. And from the beginning, I was like, why the fuck all you have hardware that works with Linux? Why would you would do your own hardware? It doesn't make any sense. Sorry. Well. It's bursting your bubble again. <laughs> I, That's what I, I'm here I, for. I am currently optimistic about the future. <laughs> These opinions may change. Um, so, yeah, that's the podcast. Hopefully, the audio quality was lovely. Um,. I'll give my best. Yeah. I mean, hopefully I didn't drop out as much. No, you, now, uh, by the way, people, we changed from Discord in the... Yeah, exactly. After like 20 minutes. Uh, uh, no, what, <laughs> yeah, after about 20 minutes, the dropouts start happening. Well, again, 20, minutes, like, 20 minutes of recording, but we had like preamble before that. So yeah, like... No, this Discord. is like from the stopwatch. I took that from oh, okay. so okay. pretty, It must be, yeah, so it was pretty much 20 minutes into the show. And we then yeah. then, then switched to the, that German audio... The German terrifying command line. Studiolink.de. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, boy. It's good. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's great. Uh, we should be on a more regular schedule now that I live in a house. Yeah, we had some. Yeah, obviously. Not, they, not, not a castle of cardboard boxes. We never, so. we never really announced this uh, that we would take some time off. But also, I lost the episode and it's through in the spanner in the <clears> works. <throat> yeah. Oh. Dave, we have to re- record a few episodes every week to make up for this shit. To keep up the average, yeah. Shit. But, are, we, are we including? Uh, are we including FAP and uh, the forced one? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, Wait, GNR no we needs. We need to get the standard up. <laughs> oh god. Well, you have you have an office now. Got to, I've got to do more interesting Linux things to, to make segments. No, I can just talk about Battletech law <laughs> for like just do three dr- shows. <laughs> dramatic readings. And then how is Steiner? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to give that um, first book a read, actually, I think. Uh... I, I, I've started with it. It reads actually quite good. The, 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 the other one that, that one that that just the Mac Warrior 3 story that that had some editing issues. Hmm. But that felt like early black library <laughs> stuff. Well I mean oh. it's it's a it's a little bit like uh fan fiction y. Yeah, if, I mean I've read some um, there's some German only Battletech books. I think I read some of them back in the day. I, I did definitely remember reading some Battletech stuff. But yeah, that's um that's what I need. Another lore hole. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, let's we, wrap this up. Yeah, let's let's do this. Hack the planet. Hack the planet. No, not not yet. Contact oh, us. Shit. 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 No, I was too busy thinking we don't want another email that long. No. <laughs> if you'd like to send us a monumental but still quite good email, 
uh, you can email us at gnr at sixgun.org. We will read it. Uh, I will filter out from the various spam emails where people are like, would you like to post this on your blog? Oh, God, uh, yes, we get those now. Some oh. prick put us on a mailing list and or we put the email just in the web. So it got scraped. Um, if you want to tweet us both, we can have uh, at Geek News Radio on Twitter. Um, you can tweet us individually as well if it's just relevant to one of us or just do all three. Uh, Fab is... At Fabsh, Foxtrot, Alpha, Bravo, Sierra Hotel. I am still at Mega Slippers. That's Mega Slippers. We have a Discord where, again, just slow trickles of more people joining. Uh, Dum Dee Dum recently joined and has been, a little, like, has been vocal. It's good. It's fun. We talk about cakes. Uh, I, mo- <laughs> I moan about houses. Uh, it's good. We, 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 we post photos of beers and food, the food stuff. Fab had some really good ramen the other day. Oh, God, it looked, yes. It was, it was awesome. It looked amazing. Uh, and we organised playing PUBG, which I can now play, hopefully, because I have a desk, not a, not a pile of boxes. Um, when we do play PUBG, uh, we stream it, but sometimes we put the VODs on YouTube as well as the episodes. Uh, that link is also in the show notes. I think that's all of it. I think that's it. Uh, it's GNU slash Linux, actually. I'm still waiting for Hector Planet. Oh, I was going to end with it's GNU slash Linux. Hector Planet! 